If you're looking for Easter DIYs, I got you covered. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with some little wooden cutouts. I know that you can get stuff like this at craft stores and at, at your Dollar Tree or at the thrift store, which is where I got mine. You're going to need some Mod Podge because we're going to decoupage today. And a little paintbrush. I'm going to use a lighter and then I'm going to use some napkins. And these gorgeous napkins came from Marshalls. They're beautiful and it just screams cottage to me. Definitely. What do you think? So I'm just going to separate my pieces because I prefer to work with one piece. You have less wrinkling, just in my opinion. And then I'm going to start laying down some Mod Podge on one of my bunnies. We will be doing this to all of them. And I just want to make sure that I start off with a thinner layer and then get just, you know, make sure that I get all of my areas. I don't want anything to come off. I'm going to lightly lay the napkin down, just choosing which area I like with the flowers. And there's a big variety, so all the bunnies will look different. And then I'm going to carefully pat it down and then go over it with a little more Mod Podge to seal it down to the wood. If you want to paint the edges of your bunny a different color, you can certainly do that. But I like the wood, um, so I'm going to leave it that way. You know, uh, I love rustic, and I like the rustic cottage look. So I'm just going to cut it out. And then I saw this little trick. I think my friend Trish did this on Crafting Cousins. I wanted to try it. So this is one way that you can do it, but you better be super careful if you try it. It left a little black mark on my napkin. I don't know if it was the type of fabric or I don't know what happened, but I just went ahead and took my sanding block and sanded off those darker areas. But it surely did get a nice, close, um, almost cut, if you will. So we're gonna go on with the next one. This time I'm gonna just do it the way that I normally do it. I've chosen another little area that I like and it's different than the other bunny, so because the flowers are different, it's going to give them a little bit of a different appearance. I like that. They'll be unique. I'm going to cut them off. My little handy dandy scissors. I got some new scissors. I'm excited about those. And then I'm going to take my sanding block and just go downward and away on the edges all the way around the bunny to make a nice clean finish. And you can see the edges that I'm talking about. These are just natural wood. I didn't paint anything underneath. You could probably paint the whole bunny white if you wanted to really make that pattern pop. But for me, I like it this way. You can use a nail file also if you don't have a sanding block. And then just be sure that you go back over with your Mod Podge to seal in your beautiful napkin. And so here's another one. I'm gonna use more yellow on this one. Place it down. Now, if you don't have these napkins, don't worry about it. Get napkins wherever you can find them. Right now, I think the spring and Easter is 40 off at Hobby Lobby. So go over there and grab you some pretty napkins, whatever style you like, whatever pattern you like. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs, I'd love it if you would subscribe and join my YouTube family. Okay, so you get the technique now, right? You're a pro at it. You can do this. Then you're going to seal it. Always, always go back and seal it. And I'm just using matte, but you could use gloss or whatever one you like. Now for the tail, I started off using some little pom-poms, but then I decided, you know what? I've got some baby's breath left over, and how cute would that be to make a tail with the flowers for the cottage bunnies? And look how cute they turned out. I just used three, and I kind of stacked them on top of one another, and it makes the cutest little floral tail. I think it's perfect. What do you think? You can certainly use pom-poms or whatever you like for yours. And here are my three bunnies, and you see they're all different but similar. On to the next project. I am going to be using this frame that I got at the thrift store. You can get frames everywhere. Maybe you have some farmhouse stuff that you want to transition to cottage. Go grab it, and let's fix it up. So I'm going to use this. This is like a plasticky cover that you can use to give you some privacy on your windows. I'm going to use it so that I can make not a stained glass, but an etched glass look. So I'm going to cut out the amount that I need, peel off the backing carefully. This is the first time I've ever done this. I really was not sure where to go with this, so I thought at first, all right, well, let's use some hot glue to stick it down because I don't want the sticky side forward because then it would get dirty, right? And everything would stick to it. It would be dusty. You want the side down that 
the sticky side up so it's facing me it's sticking to my fingers essentially but the hot glue was kind of melting that that vinyl or plastic whatever that is so I thought well let's just use some popsicle sticks and the stapler and staple it down to secure it and that did the trick still have my hot glue under there but for more security I didn't want to pull it loose it was kind of melted so I want to you know just give it some more security so it wouldn't come off and I went ahead and did that on that end and then on this end I just used it without the glue pull it straight make sure that it's wide enough for your panes just like this and don't lay it down because everything's gonna stick to it but I'm gonna fix it so I'm gonna use a sheet of plastic and this actually came off of a big poster board cutout thing that I bought on Hobby Lobby's uh, clearance sale and I'm gonna use it here and put this clear plastic down and it's gonna keep your backing from having anything stick to it and you can still see through it you wouldn't want to use paper because then you wouldn't be able to see through it and we want to be able to see so I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim off all of the extra plastic here and then just to make it look nice and neat I'm gonna take some of my scotch tape and go over the edges so that none of this peels off I started off using masking tape but then it just looked bad because it was white you know okay so here we go this is what it looks like so far and I like it I think this is good now I'm gonna take one of these flower market cans from Dollar Tree I think there's three different sizes but I just bought the one size I'm gonna decide where I want to place it on my frame and then I'm gonna take one of my little tools here from Dollar Tree I think it's some type of like a carving set or something there's several tools in there I'm going to make some holes that are about the width of the crossbars on my window and I'm gonna fix them on both sides so that they're wide enough for my zip tie to go through you see there if you don't have zip ties to attach your projects you could always use some type of a glue or wire floral wire something like that so now I'm deciding where I want to put it I like it there so I'm gonna I'm gonna get my zip tie go through the hole on the back and because we didn't glue anything down to the crossbars I can just slide it right underneath and into that bucket this makes a nice little way to embellish this window and maybe I don't want to use the flower market for later in the year maybe I want to use a you know a tin can or something there later or hang a wreath off of it all I have to do is cut that off all right next project we're going to use these frames and they are about the same size I think they're five by sevens we're gonna stack these together to make a better frame I'm gonna use some plaster chalk paint and of course another napkin this is a piece of spare cardboard I need a backing so I'm going to cut this out you can skip this step if you have a backing I'm just measuring it by the widest one on the bottom because this is gonna be the backing for the entire thing and then I'm going to cut it out you can cut it out a little bit smaller or to the inside of your marking lines so that it doesn't overhang and you don't have to trim down so now I want to make sure that I have my pattern where I like it and then I didn't separate this napkin it's not necessary for this project I'm just gonna wrap it around using my tape I'm gonna tape it to this piece of cardboard don't worry about the recycled cardboard that I've used here because we're gonna cover that up it'll be nice and neat on the back so no worries fold your edges under and flip it over and make it nice and neat this is going to help everything stay together and if you gently pull it kind of tight you can help get the wrinkles out of your napkin or those the seams in your napkins okay so now you're gonna go over it I'm just using my little iron here this is my little mini press that I use with my Cricut and then you take the rest of the little lines and wrinkles right out how about that keep it moving though you don't want to burn anything all right so now we want to attach these two together I'm going to stack the smaller one on top and just go ahead and add some glue got to work quickly unless you use a different type of glue and then line those up and press those down this is how it's going to look but we're gonna paint it so secure your surface make sure nothing gets all over your table 
and then just start adding on some paint. Now I used that plaster chalk paint and I used it um, with a chippy brush just because that's what I had near me. And I just wanna add this all over here. I do two coats of this. So here you can see the second coat. Once it is dry, this is how it's gonna look. I went on the inside as well. So if you see it, you'll see nice finish. And then I wanna see how I want my bunnies to be placed in there. And look, the bunny's still in the picture and that's perfect, that's how I wanted it. So to give it a little distressing, I'm gonna use my sanding block. I do this a lot. I should have used a heavier grit, but I just grabbed what I had near me. So I am gonna use a little bit firmer hand shortly. Start off doing it lightly, but here you go. So now you can see I'm going through and you can see the wood under there. And I like the look of it. I chose the plaster instead of regular white because the background on the napkin is kind of a cream color. I think it looks better together that way. But you do whatever you like. There's no right or wrong in crafting. So now I'm going to just use my stapler and just staple these down. I really recommend if you don't have a stapler that you get one to put in your crafting toolbox because they're very helpful. You can hot glue it if you'd like though. Now to cover it up, I'm just gonna use some paper that I'm recycling. You can find the links to these scissors in the description box below. They're from Arteza. It comes in a three pack and I needed some more little fussy cut scissors or small scissors. So this came in a three pack with some bigger scissors and they're really good if you're looking for some scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna put my back on now. Just use some hot glue and put this over it. I'm not concerned with it being perfect. There are some little punched out holes on the bottom back there, but nobody's gonna be looking at that when it's hung on the wall. Using a paper clip as a hanger, I'm gonna add glue to both sides and a little bit of paper to hold it down. This is how it's gonna look. I think it's so cute. Now, we're gonna take this little pedestal, and it came originally from Target, but I got mine at the thrift store. I'm gonna use some Mod Podge. To, so that we want our paint to stick better, you can go ahead and spray some type of a sealer on the plastic first. It'll help better, in my opinion anyway. So we're gonna go over with that same plaster chalk paint and go around all these little bumpy areas and every part of this pedestal. Now I'm going side to side with the paint and then up and down. I found that's the easiest way to not ruin your brush but to get around all of those little spaces with the dots. See this really clings so much better and I only had to do one coat of paint with that sealer under there. I am a very proud plaid ambassador and I get goodies from them. So I like to try them and I like to give you the information. So if you enjoy crafting, you might wanna check out plaid. All right, so I'm going to take my little pedestal and my Mod Podge and my napkin, one layer of it, of course. I'm gonna go all over the top of this with a nice even layer of Mod Podge. I'm going to lay this napkin down gently on the top and just kind of gently, gently, gently move my fingers and hands around. I don't recommend that you pull. I did that and realized that I shouldn't have, but I didn't damage it, thankfully. And then I'm going to use my little roller here to just press out any little wrinkles or bubbles. Now, there are going to be some wrinkles in here, and I'm not, I'm not bothered by that. So here are those scissors again. I'm gonna use those to go all around my edges because I need to get close. I'm gonna cut off as close as I can get with my scissors and then I'm going to pick it up and trim it a little bit closer. I don't need all of this excess and I don't want to sand it off, but you could use your sander if you wanted. But look how nicely just going around the edges with your scissors at a slant, it makes that edge. Now I wanna start by sealing off my edges, so I'm gonna use my Mod Podge here and just make sure that I have plenty to lay that down. It is not exactly perfect. My cutting lines are not exactly perfect, but they are perfect for me. They're perfectly rustic cottage and I am good with that. Don't you just love what you do when you're crafting? I know I do. 
I love crafting. I love creating for y'all. I love sharing, you know, ideas with y'all and, and giving you ways that you can save money while still making things that look wonderful in your home. At least I always set out to inspire you. So if you like this video and these creations, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It means so much. So here's our beautiful little bunny pedestal. Isn't it cute? It's not food safe, but you can use it as a riser for whatever you want to use. Put your decor on it or, you know, put a secured candle on it or maybe three candles would be pretty together. The little battery operated candles. I love this. So somehow or another, my footage got kind of messed around here, but bear with me. We're going to take this foam board and cut it to fit this 5x7 frame. This is a little bit of a shadow box frame. Back was broke on it. I got it from Goodwill, but I knew that the finish on it would be perfect for spring or summer usage. So I'm just going to measure that on the foam board, and you see me lining up my ruler here. And then you can use your scissors um, or you can use a knife, whatever you want to use to cut this down so that it will fit very snugly in the back because we don't want it to press all the way through. Okay, so there's the frame I was telling you about. I love this frame. I have no idea where it originally came from, but for me it came from Goodwill, as well as that cream colored burlap, this flower pick, this pick, this ribbon. In fact, the only thing that I use that didn't come from Goodwill would be the foam backing and this little sign that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby last year. So I'm going to cover my piece of foam in this burlap. I'm going to trim it off so I have about an inch extra for the, for the, uh, the thickness of this foam board. I need to be able to fold this over so and glue it down. Be sure if there's a part that you're using that has the tag on it that the tag is on the back side and not against the burlap because you will see that through the burlap. So I'm just going to pull a little bit over and press it down into that glue. You can use clamps or clips, whatever you have. I like to use my Crafter Square little pink and metal clamps there. They work good for these thinner surfaces. And they don't clamp down so hard that they make an indention, so that's really convenient when you're doing a crafting project. Just going to roll that over and press it down. Protect your fingers. Sometimes I have my fingers that, did you see that? That's craziness. I had the protector on my pointer finger on the left hand and I'm using my other fingers to press it down. Not my smartest move. Okay, so I'm just trimming off that line because it would drive me crazy not to. And I'm going to kind of turn that corner in and then press it up. That way there's no bulk hanging out on the side. Just kind of turn the corner in, press it down. You can trim off any of these little, little fibers that are bound to come out with burlap. It's just the nature of it. Lots of strings, so it is stringy. Okay, folding that one in too, pressing it down, and then holding it. You don't have to use the clamps. Um, if it looks like it's gonna stay for you, that's fine, but the fabric is it's a little on the thicker side. So I've found in my experience that it needs a little more help to stay where it needs to until the glue has a chance to grab it. Now you see this, this is not dirty. This is part of the burlap. It's just a darker fiber that's in there. And I'm trying to scratch it out. I'm trying to get it out. I did not pay attention when I cut it. So yeah, but that's okay because we're gonna cover it up. So I'm gonna take my hot glue 
put a good amount on the back of this plaque and then place it down. I bought three of these last year. I think they were 70, 80, or 90 percent off, but I knew I'd want to use them again. And it just so happens that the details on the bunny match the colors in the frame perfectly. So you can see here that this sits on the top of the outside. I don't want to have it completely down in there so that it is pressed against the front of the frame. So I'm just going to support the back with some strips of, uh, I think this was poster paper. Yeah, some scraps of poster paper that I had and some hot glue just to hold it where it is. Keep it from slipping all the way down. Don't worry about how it looks right now because that will be covered. Here's some felt sheet, some felt backing sheets that I have that a neighbor gave me. She was clearing out her crafting supplies, so she gave me quite a bit of stuff. And I am just going to cut that down because that's going to cover up the back and give us a little more of a finished look. This is a pretty thick felt too. This is um, almost as thick as the foam board, so it's really nice. Before we do that, I'm going to sandwich in my little hanger. And this is what I do with the piece of jute. Just make a simple little tie in there. And then I'm going to slip it through the original hanger that's on the back. And this should give it all the strength that it needs to stay. I'm going to go in with some blue here and just really get kind of thick with the application. And then press this down on the back. Grab some clamps to hold it down. And then once it is set up, you can remove your clamps. And this is what we have so far. Now, because the hanger originally had a wire in the top, there are holes there. These are not holes that I was interested in spackling or um, using wood filler or anything because I knew that I would be able to trim it out and give it more of a shabby chic look if I added a little bit of that antique decorative ribbon. You can get decorative ribbon at any craft store. But there's something about these old ribbons that I just, I love. I'm going to trim that off a little bit just using uh, manicure scissors. I don't have detailing scissors, but these work perfectly for me. And now we're going to work on a pretty little bow to go on the top. This is a little bit out of focus, but it's actually a, like a peach, peachy color. It's really a nice little ribbon. And it's pretty thick with the two layers, with the ribbon in the back and then the lace on the top. It's pretty thick, so it kind of holds its own there. Now, all I'm doing is making six loops on each side to make the bow part, the top part of the bow. I'm going to use a little piece of jute scrap here. Little tip, if you save those little pieces of burlap that come out when you're doing your projects, those little strips that always come out, you can use those again for things like this, just little scraps to tie things off if you have a good strong piece of burlap. Sometimes they'll break if you, you know, you bear down on them too hard. So just be sure that you've got a good piece, test it out before you tie it, just kind of pull on it and see if it's going to work for you. Put two or three knots in there because we're going to be pulling on this bow and you want to be sure that that knot does not come out or you'll have to start all over. I made this a small bow and just a simple bow because I like the simplicity and I want the main focus really to be on that gorgeous little bunny in the in the center. I'm going to cover up the center with just a little piece of that same ribbon. Don't leave your little tails poking out. You want to get that nice and clean looking. Protect your fingers. It is a pretty thick ribbon though, so you will see me use my the wrong unprotected fingers on here. It's almost like putting on those finger protectors. It's like putting a band-aid on, so then you kind of you favor that finger and you don't want to use it because you feel like you got a bobo on it. Well, that's kind of what I think my left hand is thinking. Okay, it has a mind of its own. So now we need some tails for that pretty ribbon. 
for the pretty bow and I'm just going to cut four little strips and cut them at a slant rather than cutting them dovetails or flat or whatever just because I thought I wanted to try something different so this is the pattern that I like and we're going to try this and just see and you just give me your opinion what do you think do you think that once this bow is together that this is a good look or no should they have a should the tails have a little more freedom or what do you think I'm always trying to do something a little bit different. I don't want everything that I make to look exactly the same. And I want to challenge you to be creative and try your own things. What do you think? Remember, there's really no right or wrong to crafting. It's, it's your own creativity. It's what you love, what brings you joy. I say it all the time, joy, joy, joy. It's all about that. It's about happiness and doing what makes you happy. So this is what we have so far. And I think it looks good. Now I'm just tripping down some of the remnants here from that little bouquet of roses that I had. It had been used by another crafter apparently and lots of little buds and flowers were missing from it. So I just picked it apart and I'm just using, you know, what there is left. Picking the parts that will actually fit and not obscure the view from the little bunny because I don't want that to happen. I don't, I don't want the flowers to become, you know, the attention grabber here. I take some of the little rosebuds and place them around. I always want to leave in sort of my thought process instead of giving you a completely edited start to finish quickly hammer it out kind of video because I want you to see how I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about when I'm crafting, what brings me inspiration and, and what looks good to me and how you can move things around before you glue it. You know, move it around, see where you might like it first, what it looks like to you, and then, you know, for me, I want to give you inspiration and you decide what looks best for you. And then you take that idea and do your own thing. You know, that's my channel is making it my own because I want you to make things your own. Not cookie cutter of what somebody else does, you know? So when you have a foliage pick, be sure that you realize that they're plastic pieces or fabric pieces and you can trim those down. If you need something to lay flat, just trim off one side that's going to be against the flat surface, kind of like I did on the bottom there, and just press it in and see it fits nicely now. And you'll never know because you can't see the back of it. I'm going to add a little greenery to this side too. And then again, I'm thinking, where do I want to put this other piece? And I'm going to add it, just that piece, right to the top of that bow. I'm going to show you how to make this on a much smaller budget. So we're going to take some tissue paper and I'm going to tape this over a piece of cardstock. I'm just going to use my tape, go around the edges of each side of this paper and just secure it down. What we're going to do is use our inkjet printer to print out a color photo of Peter Rabbit that I found and I will link that for you. So I have a nice straight edge and that's the end I want to go into the printer. Look at this beautiful picture. Love it. Again, the links are going to be below for you and you can check that out on my Pinterest. I have lots of freebies over there. All right, and this is a thrifted picture that I got. Can you believe that? There's not even a chip out of it. It's in perfect condition. But I'm going to wipe it off and get all of my little oils off my from my hands and from the thrift store and wherever else, get that all off. You can wash with soap and water if you want to and you just let it dry really well and then you can use it. I'm going to take this little mini cutting board. I had already measured this against the picture so I know what size I'm going to need and I'm just going to go ahead and trim it down 
you want to use a pencil on the tissue paper, not a pen that might bleed. You don't want to make a mess. So go ahead and cut to the inside of the line. And originally, I thought that I would leave this oval or egg shape on the picture, but you'll see I change it up just a little bit in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and save some of the other graphics from this picture. I'm going to cut out the shovel with the bird, and then there are some cabbages or lettuce, whatever type of greens that are on there that I wanted to cut out of the garden and use those as well. Because really, we call them dupes, but for me, this is more like an inspiration. Pottery Barn was an inspiration, but you get the same type of a look. So this is where I decide, mm, maybe I want to cut this down a little bit. In the end, it didn't really matter, but you'll see. So just watch how I do it and then decide which way you would prefer to do it. Cutting it all out, little messy, fussy cutting in the beginning, or just wait to the end. And I know that I want it to fit on this part of the picture. I'm going to add my Mod Podge, and I'm just using some glossy Mod Podge because this picture is glossy. I'm going to put this down and then lay my tissue down. You want to be careful because tissue is fragile. Where it is lifting away, I'm just going to cut little slits and then tuck it and overlap it. If it's wrinkled, it doesn't really matter. It's not as noticeable because this isn't a thick paper. This is just a tissue paper. And it's going to lay down nice and smooth. And what I'm doing now is just smoothing it out with my fingers to make sure that I don't tear it. And I do have some glue on my fingers. You can see there to the left. I have some glue on my fingers. That way I don't have dry fingers on that wet paper and tear it. Then I decide, how about adding some of these pieces of greens up here on the top of the picture to just kind of extend the color and the picture on the top. Because they're in our inspiration piece, they do have little bits and pieces throughout, so I thought maybe that would be good on our picture. So I'll show you how to do it, and if you choose not to use it, if you know, you don't want to use the smaller pieces, you certainly do not have to do that. But if you want to, this is how you do it. So I'm just looking at where I want to put it, because once you put it down, you can't lift it up. You can't lift it. It will tear. So there was a little bit already on there. I'm just putting it down, and then I'm going to use my little soft, flat brush and my fingers to place it down. I'm going to do the same thing just here and there where I think I want to put those pieces. Then I'm going to get, take some Mod Podge, go over the top with this. Uh, again, this is a soft brush because a stiff brush would tear the tissue. You don't want to do that. Now I'm going to continue around and just put that wherever I want to put it. But I like it like that. I think it looks nice. And then I'm going to turn this picture around and since it's still slightly wet from the Mod Podge, I'm going to prop it up on this wreath and then I'm going to go ahead and put my the little shovel piece with the little bird on the back. Alright, so now because I don't like the rough edges around there, it's just I don't like it. I don't think it blends in well. I just don't like it. I'm going to take a stiff brush after this is all dry and I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to stipple it all around the edges so that I can create somewhat of a egg or oval shape. It's going to make it blend more into the picture and it just gives it a better look in my opinion. But you, you can do this whichever way you like it. And you can certainly without stippling go around it with a a brush and just make a you know a stiffer more rigid or exact line if you wanted to but I want mine to be stippled and dreamy and watercolor and cottagey and I think that I do achieve that in the end and you can just let me know what you think about it you see how that blends it out I love it I'll be using this method again of course because I really like it and then once I start adding this down and putting it around, I thought, you know what? This picture would be really pretty if the entire thing was stippled. So I went ahead and took that same white paint. I think that is wicker white that I'm using. And I'm going to just take that all the way around to the outside and then continue around the entire picture. I do this also around the little greens that I have on the top. 
kind of go around the edges of those and that helps blend that out because it is darker that's a, like a richer color than what it looks like on my piece in the middle so I'm just going to continue all the way around now if you don't have a stippling brush and a lot of people don't they don't have these brushes um, you can most definitely use a sponge and I have a little piece cut over there and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment but you're just gonna pounce it up and down I'm not dragging it at all I'm just pouncing up and down and it leaves like bristle prints and it's a really pretty texture the sponge you want to be sure that you tear that so you don't have any hard lines on it and then just start pouncing that all over and it it does really well it does give it the same type of a look and so here's a close-up so you can see what that looks like and then um, you just continue around that print that's on the back go around there so now you have two options you can use a brush or you can use a sponge I wouldn't recommend a makeup sponge I uh, like these sponges and I did get mine from Dollar Tree it was a bath sponge so now we're gonna go on to the Essex Bunny 2950 to 3950 can you believe that all right, I'm gonna start off with some Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Slate Gray Paint. And I'm gonna take my little ceramic bunnies. I have a little tea light ceramic bunny and then a larger one. And I'm gonna take them outside and spray paint them. They don't have to be perfect. You can see I pointed out some little spots that were still white. And then once it is definitely good and dry, you don't want any tackiness left, you can go on to the next step. I'm gonna take some of this paint. It's a dark gray. And I'm going to mix it with some baking soda. I don't have exact measurements for you here. You're just going to play around until you get to the right consistency. So I have probably a little over a tablespoon of the baking soda in the cap there. And then I've added some of the gray paint. And it's about a tablespoon of paint probably. I'm going to mix that in. I'm just using a little stick here that I use on my paints and my things like that just to mix it up and then you can see the texture of that okay it's kind of like a cake icing you want it to be thick because you want it to have little bumps and grooves and mix in here for what I'm doing I want this to have a cement look is it exactly like the Essex bunnies from Pottery Barn no it is not exactly like that but it is an option if you like a concrete look and I think it gives you the same feel in the end, but you can let me know when you see the end results. So I am just kind of dragging and going up and down and back and forth. Um, I don't want to have an exact pattern on here. I want to go in all different directions, get in the cracks around the tail, the grooves, um, the feet, the ears, the eyes, the mouth, under the neck. And once you get all that down, you can just sit it down and then work on the part above it see I had a little fingerprint I had to get that all cleaned out you can get these little bunnies at Target dollar spot you could probably get something like this the Dollar Tree maybe I don't know I haven't I haven't seen them but maybe I've had mine for years they've been white in my Easter collection for so long then we're gonna take the larger one and this one actually to me turned out better because it is it was originally more textured you can see the little lines and dips um, kind of gives it like a texture to the fur so it, it works really well with this one I'm just going to continue on just like I did with the smaller one and go all around them and then when they're dry this is what they look like and you really want to make sure they're dry I let mine dry overnight they will dry to the touch sooner than that though I'm gonna take two short little um, I call them stippling brushes but they're stencil brushes I'm gonna take some white chalk paint and just go around the where the grooves would be okay now this was my first time doing this so give me some grace here because I really I, I talked to myself and I was thinking oh my goodness what have you done this is not gonna be this is gonna be a disaster but as I keep going along I kind of got a feel for it and you'll see that as it progresses through here so in the beginning when you start doing this and if it looks terrible do not give up on yourself it is just paint and we can fix it right we can fix it 
So I put this in fast motion so you could see here the progression without having to watch every single step and get bored with me. So just hang in there, hang in there. Okay, so this is what it looks like at first. And then I decide, okay, we're gonna go in and we're gonna add some more. By the time I got done with the little bunny, I had much more confidence in myself to move on to the larger bunny. And this one I was much happier with. Again, it goes in in steps and it takes some time to accomplish the look that you like with this technique. But I promise you, if you hang in there, it's gonna get better. See, right now my bunny does not look so wonderful, right? It really doesn't look that great. But I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna layer it on just a little bit at a time. I think that's the key to this technique. Don't go too heavy handed because you see the difference when I use a lighter approach on this side. Isn't that better? I think that looks so much better and it really does give it a concrete look to me you know to me it does and maybe if you wanted to go with a lighter gray underneath you could you know you could mix that in and get a little bit of a lighter look but i like this be sure that you get around the eyes around the ears the feet the toes the mouth around the neck and y'all don't be so concerned about where your bunnies come from you can get them anywhere. So here we go with the finished one. And I decided to go just a little bit heavier on this little one. Gotta accent his little nose a little bit better. I look like I'm punching him in the nose, but it makes a difference. Look at his little cute nose. And then a dry brush on top of that. And so I went a little heavier handed on the small one and then not so much so on the large one. Now we're going to do a stone Easter Bunny. 69 to $207. Uh-uh. Nope. Let me show you how I did it. I'm going to add some chalk paint here. And I think this was my plaster chalk paint and some baking soda. This time I kind of got the texture right the first time. And then I'm going to show you how it looks. I'm just using a little spatula to show you. It looks a little bit like a lighter, easier cake batter or like frosting same situation here it's gonna be super thick it starts to dry pretty quick um, if you have a, a problem maybe with your texture this paint texture sticking on to that ceramic please seal it first use some type of a sealer get you some Mod Podge something like that and it'll help it stick better with this terracotta bunny it stuck perfectly it was this this i should have done this years ago i should have tried this but you know a lot of times in life we let fear keep us away from doing things and we have doubt and that carries over into our crafting you know we're not not always adventurous in everything we do but it's okay to try it you know it's paint you can always start over and if you get something from the thrift store this little bunny came from the thrift store you know, it, I mean, how much money are you really wasting if you try it? You're still saving so much money compared to what you would if you went to Pottery Barn and got it. I'm not paying 27 or $207 for anything in my house, I promise. Not unless it's a big piece of furniture. Okay, so after it is dried, and again, it dried overnight as well, I'm going to take this sponge and tear it until there are no fine edges on it. I want it to be just kind of a loose look. I'm adding some of my antiquing wax down into a little bit of water and then I'm going to use this sponge to start applying it. I'm going to just pounce this up and down and I want to get all over bunny. Again, you probably want to seal your products first, you know, your projects first before you put it down because if you are a little heavy handed and this is a this is water that you're putting on here now water and chalk paint it's not water resistant it can crack i had a little bit of a problem on the smaller bunny but i fixed it um but yeah i suggest that you go ahead and put a layer of mod podge on it or spray sealer or something like that so that it has some grip to hold on to all right so put this in fast motion you can see the progression you can see that he's starting to look like he's aged and I love that he's looking like he's been sitting outside for a while yes mr. bunny bring it I love it I think it's cute 
So after it is dried completely, then you can lightly go back over like on the ears, on the feet, on the tail, any areas that they have, you know, a little more detail, go ahead and put it there. That's how it would age anyway. You know, pollen falls on it, dust falls on it, and this is how it would be. Make them nice and cute, both of them. Get it as aged as you want it to look, and then be sure you put it someplace and let it dry completely. I didn't seal my bunnies at all, and I love the way they look. They're so cute. Love them. See, I've been able to give them some new life instead of donating them. Yes. I love that age look. Right, we're going to start off with this cross. Now, I got mine thrifted, but you can definitely get the wire ones at Dollar Tree. But I'm going to show you how to do it if you have this kind. So it's about a 20 by 12. Then I'm going to take some burlap, just plain burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. And we're going to wrap around all of this stuff. So this is pretty easy to do, but you're going to have to protect your fingers for sure because you're going to be using some hot glue and some sketchy little areas. So I'm just going to take the corner right here in the bottom and we're going to start on the bottom part of the cross. So I'm taking my hot glue, touching the wire and also putting it down on the burlap. Then I'm going to wrap halfway over the bottom and fold it under. You can see that I'm kind of folding it or cupping it under just like this and then in order to save and preserve the amount of ribbon we're using I want you to be very careful and just try to overlap where the wired parts are so that you don't have a bunch of extra ribbon being wasted by wrapping it around and around and around and overlapping it like crazy so you can see here I'm just pretty much trying to wrap it tack it down with a little bit of glue and just stretch that ribbon as long as as far as it will go because I realize some people are not being able to get out right now. It's winter time, maybe you're snowed in. Let's get out some of those things that maybe you had at fall and go ahead and use those. Use up that stash that I know all of us crafters have. So you're just gonna continue around like this, overlapping just, just you know, over the little wired area, just enough so that you cover up your frame like this. Now let's talk about some goals here. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that my goals are 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st. Some people don't understand why this is important to me, but if you watch my channel and you're already subscribed, you probably already know why. I want to be able to show people that you can have a beautiful home without having to pay a fortune to make the pieces that you put in there, and you'll make them look exactly how you like them, uniquely to your own taste. So if you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, I would love to have you as part of my family. It's easy to do and free. So you can see how I finished off the back and I'm gonna go around on the arms and leave the inside open. So the same process as before, I'm gonna choose a corner, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna put a little glue on the frame and a little glue on the burlap. I'm gonna cup it under and then I'm gonna fold it around. Now don't be concerned about what we're gonna do with the edges because I'm gonna show you a way to make those nice and neat and you won't see any of your hardware underneath. So just go ahead and continue around, very easy. And then when you get to the back, cut it off and be, be careful and make sure that you're putting all your glued loose ends in the back. You don't want that on the front. I wanna tell you about my good friends who are doing a thrift flip road trip open challenge. It's hosted by Our Green Acres and Crafting Cousins. I'm part of it and I hope you will be too. All right, so I'm going in here in the edges, just tacking it down with some glue. I'm gonna roll it under so that it's close to the frame, nice and neat. You can see what we're doing here and I'm just gonna take that hot glue and kind of sandwich those pieces together. I folded it under, got a nice clean edge, and now I'm just using my protected fingertips 
to pinch this closed. It's going to keep that burlap ribbon from slipping off and it's going to make it nice and neat. Now, to be honest, you can see here it takes a little more of your ribbon when you're doing the shorter arms and the top than it does on the bottom. And that's just because you don't have a lot of room to work there. But still, I didn't even use a whole spool to do this, so that's pretty good, right? All right. Now I'm just going to continue around like this. Again, this is easy to tuck down. You got the little edge where we folded it under. We're going to press it down into the inside and roll the edges and push them together. You can do this, right? Protect those fingers, though. Be sure you get some finger protectors. You can get them at Dollar Tree, so they're $1.25. Uh, the dollar and quarter tree and they're real easy to use you just slip them on your finger they're stretchy so they fit most fingers all right same process we're gonna wrap this around and around and around now I slow this down because I want you to see that at the top I have a little hook area here and you might not have this but if you do just work around it that's what I'm doing I'm rolling it under tucking it in it's being stubborn Use your glue where you need it and then continue around. Now, if you're going to make a hanger for this, it would be great to put your hanger underneath before you wrap it with the ribbon so that it'll be concealed and it'll look nice and neat and high end looking and finished. Y'all excuse my hair, I keep getting my head in the way. So, you can see here what I've done, and I'm going to continue around just making sure that that is stuck down in there. If you just have a wire wreath, from Dollar Tree, you don't have to worry about all this little, uh, those little stick areas or the little, I don't know, vine areas that are poking through. But um, yeah, you get the you get the idea though. So we're gonna press that down and make it nice and neat. I want the back to be neat looking too and finished. So I want to make sure that all my edges are nice and trimmed down. Now, so far, this is what we have. This is the base that we have created. We've left the center open because this is where we're going to do our arranging. Now, go and pick out whatever flowers you like. I know a lot of times you can find beautiful deep reds and purples in the fall, so you may have some of that in your stash. I have these picks from last year that were thrifted. Also, the white branches, I've had those from last year. I've actually used them in a different wreath. But if you want to use fall, here is an example of one that I thrifted from fall. You can just take off the leaves that are fall specific and add on different leaves. You've seen me do that in other videos. That's so easy to do. Then you're going to want some type of a flyaway here. You can get that kind of stuff at Dollar Tree as well, or it may be in your stash already. I chose purple for my flowers because of, you know, it being a Christian holiday. So you do yours however you would like. Now you can just take those branches, like I know Dollar Tree has branches that you can get sometimes. I know they have pussy willow. I know they have dogwood I've seen in some people's halls. Um, so you could use something like that if you would like. I love that this looks like dogwood to me. Um, so I'm gonna use it. I'm just crossing them end over end like I'm making a swag that's gonna go at a diagonal. My idea is like you see in, um, like outside of some churches, they'll have like a big cross and then they'll have the purple sash across and uh, so I wanted to use the purple flowers for that and then the sideways swag would be representative of the sash so that's what I'm doing here I hope y'all like this I have never done to my knowledge to my memory I have never done a cross wreath so I hope this is something that y'all like. And if you don't, you know, and this is not your thing, then you can certainly use the technique on other wreaths. So you don't have to worry about that part of it. Just go ahead and just take the inspiration from it. Maybe you just like the way you needed some information on how to wrap a wreath with burlap, then you got it here. If you needed to know how to make a swag, you got that here too. So I'm just making little pins. I'm using the pins to stick through, twist them on the back, and secure these branches down where I need them. You can do it wherever you feel like the heavy spots are or where it needs a little something extra to hold it down and keep it from, you know, flopping around and coming away from your frame. This is actually going to be sort of a low profile wreath. It's not going to be a whole lot sticking out. We're not going to do a bow for it, but you certainly can. 
So you could actually probably do this on most screen doors. You know, if you have a storm door outside and you could actually put this on your door and it would fit without being crushed. So I'm gonna continue around just like this, twist it, and then I'm gonna take my clippers and cut through each of those wires and press it back down into the frame. You don't want this scratching your door. And certainly if you wanna go ahead and cover this up with a little extra ribbon or something, you can. Y'all need to join us in our community tab for giveaways and fun. We're doing weekly giveaways. I'm learning all about my subscribers and we are having a blast over there. All right, so just continuing around. You know I do this with my arranging. I just move things until it looks exactly like I want it to look and it gives me the feel that I like. So now I'm gonna start with these beautiful deep purple hydrangeas. I'm gonna cut the stems off because we don't need all of that in there. It's just making it too hard on us. Follow me on my social media, I'd love to see you there. All right, so I'm gonna take one and put it kind of in the corner on the left. So if you look at that little section there that's open as a box, this is in the left corner, upper, and this is in the right lower corner. And I'm just gonna push them together. And the reason I'm doing this is because I kinda want it to look like one big flower. And I think it, since they're the same color, it does kind of have that effect. Now I'm gonna take my branch here with my little berries and just cut that down. I'm going to cut it apart because I only have one and I want to be able to spread this out over this swag and in this way I can do it. So I'm just going to press this up into here. Now if you can get in there around the branches you don't even have to use any hot glue in this area. Just press it up in there and you can also use the overlapping parts of your burlap to hold in your florals. So I'm just trimming off the little extra stuff there and putting it down in the same way that I would if I was making a swag. I'm doing it on the top corner and I'm doing it on the bottom corner. Or if you do it on the left, do it on the right. You know, that sort of thing. That's the way I want this wreath to look. And see, look at that. I pushed those closer together and just immediately made it look like one big flower. That's so much better. But that's why you wanna look at it from all angles and above it and beside it and to the left, to the right. Um, to make sure that it looks exactly how you want it to look. To look like you designed this with intention in mind. And so I noticed here where it overlaps that there is a gap and I do not like that. So I'm going to fix that by simply pulling out some flowers that are kind of extra, that are kind of, you know, won't be missed in that area. And I'm going to place them down right here on the branch and I'm not putting them straight up. I'm doing them kind of to the side and facing to the side like the rest of the flowers so that they fit in. So this is what I'm doing at this point, taking it, looking at it from all different directions to see what I need. And I feel like I need more flyaways. So I found these beautiful picks. They were in my little stash that I have with a bunch of extras that I cut off of other things. And I'm so glad that I picked it up because the colors look beautiful with this they just are perfect so because these are on just plastic I'm just pulling these apart in little sets of twos and threes but if you have wire in yours just cut them with your little wire cutters there I've got some little cutters right there that I got from the thrift store and then see how I just press that one up into the the frame here it's into the ribbon and right into the frame and it stays right where it needs to be if you're in a place that gets a lot of wind and it's not protected though, you know, you might want to do a little extra um, gluing. And certainly if you're going to sell this, you would want to glue this in place. But for my purposes of teaching you and inspiring you, I am just going to get this project done and tell you how to do it the right way. How about that? Okay, so we have some down on the left side. Uh, on the left top and then we have the ones that we place down on the right if you're looking at it on the right. So when you have a pick that doesn't have a long enough stem just grab a piece of plastic, a stem, another piece of floral stick, whatever you have and just wrap it up. Add to it and that's what I'm doing right here. I know I need a little more height so I'm taking my floral tape which by the way if you don't know is waxed you have to pull on it to make it stick. It's not sticky like regular tape. You pull and twist and that's how it sticks. It releases the wax and it will stick to your project. So now that's perfect. That gets it right up where I like it. 
simple little simple little hack there and this is our final project you can definitely put a bow on here if you'd like but I like mine simple and rustic as it You're going to pick out some greenery that you would find on a walk in a forest or in a park. A lot of this was thrifted and some could have come from Dollar Tree at one point. Been in my stash a while so I'm using what I've got. Things that look like you would see them in the spring. Okay and then you've got this cute little sign. I have sanded off the glitter and I have roughed it and scuffed it up on all of the surfaces here. See on both the carrots and I'm going to do the same thing on his face. All right, so we're going to move the tag and also remove your hanger. I'm going to take some of this wired burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and this one as well, the polka dots. Love this. Here's some thrifted ribbon that I got from the thrift store. I had put it back in my stash for Halloween, but it's perfect for Easter. And then this pretty green. These have the little tags with the little pointy plastic things on them, so you can just push those out. You don't even have to cut them. You can use pliers to remove these, which I started off with, but they come out super easy if you just pull them. But be careful, those little staples are very sharp. If there's any pieces left in there, go ahead and cut those off. And then, this isn't necessary, but it was necessary for me. I had to have those back sanded down. And when you sand them, it's so satisfying because the little holes just disappear completely. I don't know if you're into that kind of thing, but it, yeah. My kids have got me into those satisfying videos with all the gel and the, and the goo and yeah, I watch it with them. Okay, so going right along here with the sanding, we're gonna take all the little edges mainly off of this bunny because I'm going to add something and I want to be sure that we can age this bunny a little bit more. He's already pretty rustic looking, but I want to add a little more age to him. It just softened the look of the black lines on his face and on his nose. And I like that look. I think it's, uh, it's better for the rustic um, feel that I'm going for. So here's some of that Waverly Antique paint or wax, whichever one. Gonna add it on a wet wipe. Just mix it really well, just kind of blend it up, thin it out, and then I'm just gonna start applying it on here. You see how it instantly gives it kind of a brownish aged color? That's what we're going for. And when you go around the edges with that, on that bare, I guess, whatever the backing is underneath the picture, it gives it a more defined kind of edge or border, and I like that. All right, so with my thrifted wreath that I've had forever and repurposed several times, you guys have got to do that. You really can save a ton of money if you just repurpose your items from season to season. You'll see me not using very much glue, mainly just putting these pieces in here um, in the wreath. That's the good thing about these vine wreaths too. They really hold on to your stems. You might consider if you're putting it outside where you get a lot of wind, maybe using some wire or something to hold it down in there, but it can still be removed and you can still use your wreath again. So I'm just gonna put the main weight of the greenery to one side of this wreath. You can do it any way that you like. And I'm thinking about where I might want to put my little sign. I'm continuing to move around the greenery here and there. Now these I think are supposed to be magnolia leaves. I can't quite remember 
what these are. This dark green, smooth looking piece. It bothered me that the green was flipped around and it looked kind of cheap. So I'm just trying to move it around where I can get the dark side on the outside. I'm gonna take these picks of fern and put these in here. Uh, it is my understanding that you can get these, like a, a cheaper version of these fern picks at Dollar Tree. I haven't seen them at mine. Um, so guys, be sure that you are checking out your thrift stores for florals and for greenery because I'm telling you, I have gotten some beautiful, beautiful pieces just right out of the thrift store. And when you use the Goodwill outlet, you pay by the pound. So you can really save a lot of money and get a ton of florals. They're so lightweight. And believe me, I get a ton every time I go. My basement will prove that. Just one walk through and you would see I have a wall of florals and greenery. Okay, so I'm just gonna straighten these pieces out. They've gotten kind of bunched up. I want them to look a little more lifelike. So I'm just gonna bend them apart give them a little airiness and let those be our little flyaways. I think it was Ramon at home where I got the flyaway verbiage from. And I really like that because they just kind of fly away. They just poke out and do their own thing. And I like that. Those little picks give a little bit of brightness to all that dark in there. But I love this woodland rustic look. When the wreath is complete, I do go back in there and pull out one of those picks on the side because when you see in the end the pictures, you can see that it just looks a little too heavy in that one particular area. So I did remove one of those picks and I do like it better. All right, these I picked right out of a, an old floral arrangement um, at the thrift store. I just pulled out the pieces that I wanted and left the rest for whoever could use it. And again, these little pieces, they look springy to me and they are bringing a little bit of light into all of that dark foliage there. But don't get me wrong, I love the dark foliage, but against that um, dark wreath underneath, I feel like it needed a little more light. So those little pieces will do that. And they're also little flyaways also. If you're ever watching my videos and you don't want to watch the whole process of me doing something like that, you can click up top on the little dots and you can speed it up. You can choose what speed you like. But I will warn you, sometimes I talk fast. And it might make you dizzy to listen to me at that speed. Okay, so we're going to put these pipe cleaners, glue, and a little tab of paper just to secure these down on the back of these pieces of sign so that we can put them down safely and securely on that wreath without having to necessarily glue them. Then we can use these pieces again for another project and we can use the wreath again and all of our greenery again. You're saving a ton of money. Okay, so here's our little bunny and we're just gonna nest his face down in there almost like he's peeking out of the bushes. The happy carrot is going to go on the top a little bit off center to the left and then in the bottom center, we're going to put the Easter carrot. All right, protect your fingers. This is a mesh, this burlap. That glue will go right through it and cook your little fingers and take your fingerprints right off. So be sure that you are using something to protect yourself so that you can live to craft another day. All right, we are making a bow now for our bunny. We are gonna stack this little bow, and this is what we're gonna do. Green is gonna be our longest section on the bottom. We're gonna decrease it by about an inch and put our next loop, which is our burlap, the brown. And then we're going to do the same thing for this checked ribbon. Okay, so here we go. We just put them together like that and it's going to be a stacked bow just like that. Now we need something to go in the center. We're going to tie it down and then we we're going to add a centerpiece over that. Which is the part that you could skip if you would like. What I'm doing now is just kind of folding it over trying to make sure that I'm in the center before I make a tight tie in here. 
if you make a little bit of a looser tie, then you have a little more flexibility to move those bows around so you don't have a lopsided bow. Okay, so we're going to make a loop in the middle. It's going to be the center of our bow. Same process, but with just a tiny bit of fabric or a tiny bit of ribbon. I don't know if I mentioned, these are all wired ribbons and you will see that when I fluff it out. This is why we like wired ribbon. See how you lift it up and it stays where you put it. Isn't that cute? Then you can fluff it out in different directions. If you choose to use all of the same color, you can certainly do that. I think a little checkered bow would be adorable on this wreath by itself if you wanted to do that. But I like the little, the layered look and all of the colors in here really match the wreath well. And they give me the look that I'm going for, which is, you know, the wooden, woodland rustic look. You're gonna press that down for a moment. If you have a clamp available, go ahead and grab your clamp. Fortunately, this one will fit right between the bunny's ears perfectly. And let that be your extra hand while you move on to another piece. So we're gonna cut five to six inch segments of a coordinating ribbon that we used in the bow, four of each color. I made it right to the end of my ribbon. So you know what that means? Yep, I'm gonna have to go back to Dollar Tree. Okay, now you can stack them and dovetail them just like this to save some time. Do the same thing on the other end or you can do them one at a time. Now I'm going to go in here with my orange and white. Cut those off too. Four pieces just as before. Step those, fold them, and dovetail them on both ends. Oh, I didn't use green, that's right. I was out of green, so I just used these colors. So you're gonna have four of two different kinds. This is a really simple, simple little part. You're going to take your pipe cleaner, cut it into segments. I cut mine into thirds. You want enough length on the pipe cleaner to wrap around to secure that little tail and then still to be able to tuck it inside and secure it in the wreath. So now you can bend out your little tails whichever way you want them. And this is what it's going to look like. We're going to do four of these. I pull them down in the uh, the loop, you know, the uh, bent section. I pull them down tightly with my fingers. See how I pull them tight? And then I twist. Twist them tightly. So I can manipulate them and twist them out and fold them without them slipping out of the wire. So you want to do this pretty tightly. You can use floral um, floral wire for this if you don't have any pipe cleaners. And you can certainly use, you know, a different color if you want to. Maybe green would be good. It would probably disappear down in there. But the way you fluff these out, you won't necessarily see them. So I'm going to seat these down in just some random areas in the wreath. If you need a little bit of something to hold it, go ahead and add just a dot of glue. A little bit goes a long way with hot glue. And just choose your areas around the wreath that you want this. Looking back, the bow that I'm putting in now probably should have been a little bit lower down. Um, if that other piece, that piece of extra greenery was out of there, greenery, hmm. If that piece of greenery was gone, but that's okay. I think it looks cute the way it is. And I'm gonna add one right here. And this is what we have. So 
here's some flies we're going to need. Just one of these little round signs. You can get one at the Dollar Tree if they still have them available. That one's actually thrifted. This is a canister that I got from Target on clearance a few years ago. I got some thrifted eggs and a thrifted wooden carrot. This pick was also thrifted. I just very recently picked this up. Lots of pretty colors there. So if you're not into pastels, this is gonna be the perfect one for you. This is a recycled foam block. And we're gonna start by just taking the lid off this canister. We will not need it for this project. So if you get a thrifted canister with no lid, that is perfectly fine, you won't need it. You could use a crock for this too, I think would be pretty. I'm gonna use my metal ruler from Dollar Tree and just cut a section of this off. Cut it in pieces, however you can get it to fit inside of your container. So I'm gonna cut a few more slices just to make sure that I have plenty of area to put my floral picks when I get ready to do the arranging. So I'm just slicing it up a little bit. Now we've got good area to work with. Nice snug fit so nothing is going to flop around when we start putting it together. All right, so I'm gonna start with this pick. And there was no, uh, like a tag or anything on here. So I'm not really sure where it came from. I feel like it came from a craft store rather than Dollar Tree because it is so full. Um, yeah, but you can get a couple of picks maybe from Dollar Tree that you like and use those. They have a nice variety of um, spring picks and flowers. Just get the colors that speak to you that you really like when you see them. If you find yourself smiling, those are the ones you wanna get. I'm clipping these off and I'm trying to be sure that I cut my stems at a variety of heights just in case I want some to be taller than others, though it really won't matter too much once you push them into this foam because of the depth of the canister. Okay, so I'm going to cut off a piece, uh, a couple of pieces of these stems too because I want to use these to hold my eggs. So I'm going to repurpose these wire stems for that. And there were a couple of flowers that had already been used by the previous owner of this bunch of flowers. So I'm just going to move some foliage around too and um, so that each stem will have some foliage. Now in order to get this to fit in the bottom of these little eggs, I'm going to use my glue gun and carefully just run that right in there. The heat from the glue gun is going to melt that and open us a little spot so that we can get through that um, plastic. These are coated in plastic and uh, have access to the foam center. We put the stick inside of there. If you needed to, you could just glue something in, uh, depending on what kind of picks you use. If you use the eggs, like the little plastic eggs that you put treats in, Easter treats in, then you could probably just use hot glue or maybe you could poke a hole in the end of those too and a little hot glue to hold them in place. I wanted to be sure that my picks all had a little greenery on them too so that they blended in well and made the arrangement a little bit fuller. So I've just picked three eggs of the colors that coordinate and I'm just going to get those together and then um, see I'm going to slide that one off and put it on this one. I want a nice full arrangement. I don't want to be able to see down around any of my flowers. So I've changed my camera angle here for you a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start in the middle with one of the orange flowers and then kind of work in a triangle pattern here. You can bend those stems, they're wire, so bend them a little bit so that the head of the flower, you know, can go in different directions if you'd like. Make them look a little more natural. Not all flowers grow straight up. They're seeking the sun, so they will bend in order to get to the light that they need. Little biology lesson there for you. Then I'm just adding the blue around, and then some of the little picks were kind of little flyaway picks. I want those to be higher than the rest of them. They really stick out of there. 
make it look interesting. And here are the little egg picks. I'm just going to place these in at different spots and at different heights. There's a little empty spot right there that needed a little something. And remember what I always say, turn that arrangement all around, look at it from all angles. Get above it and look down on it too to make sure you don't have any holes in there. Okay, so we're gonna need something to hold these sign, the sign and the carrot up. And we're just going to use some dowel rods to get those things in shape. So I've removed my hanger. And I'm looking to see how long I'll need this to be to get that sign above my arrangement where I want it to be. It's a little bit heavy, but it shouldn't push all the way through that floral foam. So I want to put it about that height. I'm going to use a little bit of this black ribbon since it's going to be above the arrangement so that you don't see that wooden stick when you turn your arrangement or see it from the other side. This way, if you put it in the center of your table, you still have something you know, a little bit nicer to look at. I couldn't get the tag off. You would want to remove your tag. I'm just gonna go back over that with the black marker and color it in so that you can't see that white under there. So I'm putting a good amount of blue here so that I can press the stick into it and it will get all around on that stick. I'm gonna go back and forth in a little zigzag across there to make a little bridge over it so it doesn't break off. And then I'm gonna cover this up with just some uh, pieces of ribbon that I already had, like scraps. And it's black, so it works. But you, you know, normally I'd probably just use some type of paper or something on the back, but not if it's going to be seen. You want it to look a little more neat. So there's some glue that's kind of pushing out of there. And all you have to do is take your silicone fingertips and your fingers and just kind of work at it. And it will, it'll rub right off the back. It'll be a little bit more difficult once the glue is dried, but um, it, it can still be removed, depending on the, um, if you have a painted surface or a plastic surface or what you're working with. Okay, so I know I want this to go in the top of the arrangement, maybe a little off center. Look how well that matches. That looks so cute in there. Just bend in that pick that that egg is on. Looks pretty good, right? Looking at it from all the edges. I've decided that I want to add a bow around here. So I'm just taking some of this, I think it's like a burlap tubing, like a, a mesh tubing that you can get at Dollar Tree. I can't remember what it's called and it was off of the spool. So I can't give you an exact name, but it's open in the middle like a straw. It makes a nice little bow, so I just put a simple shoelace bow there, and I'm going to trim it up. If your bow tries to twist, all you have to do is take a little dot of hot glue and arrange it on there. So then I was trying to decide where I wanted to put the carrot. And I've decided that I want to put it in the side, so I'm going to break off one of my dowel rods to make it a little shorter. I've already chosen the best side of my carrot to be on the outside and I'm going to add some glue here. Now if I had orange ribbon I could cover that up but once it is dried I can just and you see I put the little zigzag on there too. Once it is dried I can just easily poke that down into the arrangement and because of where I'm putting it you won't be able to see the back of the carrot. Adding that in, trying to find some kind of balance um, when I add it in so it doesn't look just like it's randomly hanging out on the side. You can take some moss and go around the edge of your container if you would like so that you won't see anything. But I've decided that instead of doing that, I'm going to add a little bit of this eucalyptus pick that I had left over. I've already been working on this piece uh, in other projects. So I have plenty left and I have another complete pick to use for later. So just pick the pieces that you like. I'm trying to pick the ones that have more of metal on the stem than just a plastic piece because if you get a plastic piece, you're going to have to find something 
firm like another dowel rod or pick to wrap it around to get it to stick into your phone. So if it has a metal piece on the pick, it will easily puncture the foam and stand up where it needs to be. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just showing you that because some parts of the pick are going to be more of a, you know, kind of a flimsy plastic. They're not gonna stick in there for you and they're gonna just kind of, you won't have as much control over it. So I've picked off the bottom layers and I'm just going to add these pieces in where I feel like um, it would be in a good place. So around the bottom, where there's an opening, and then some picking out of the top. You see, I'm looking all the way around as I go for spots that look like they can need it, um, that they could use a little extra something. And you can see, I don't want... I'm looking for those dark areas that need something. And when you put the greenery in there, it's going to brighten that up and bring your eye back to the outside of the arrangement where all the exciting stuff is happening. That's what we want. We're going to be using some thrifted and Dollar Tree ribbon, and that's what I have here. Use whatever you like. I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign with the bunny. It says hop, and I'm going to use this wreath that I've had for a long time. I thrifted it, and here are the measurements for you if you want to do something approximate. I wanted an oval so that it would maintain like a sort of an egg shape. I'm going to take off the flower that is on the bunny, and we're going to have to find a way to attach the sign to the wreath. So I'm going to use a pipe cleaner or Chanel stem, whatever you want to call it, some hot glue and a little piece of paper. I'm going to press that down and let it cool and go to the other side and do the same thing. You need to kind of put it on there and, and look at it and see if it's where you want this to connect and then set it aside to cool. We're going to start looking at some flowers and these are thrifted flowers. I'm, uh, I'm not sure where they came from. I can't see the tag. But you can get them pretty much anywhere this color this time of year. I'm going to feed these wires through here and then twist them on the back. Very easy. And do the same thing on the other side. Make sure that you position that little bunny right where you want him in the wreath. And I'm trying to make sure that he's down far enough that I can see the top of his little head. So we're going to make sure that it's tight. When you flip it over, you can tighten it up. And then poke those little pieces of wire straight down into that ribbon and to the wreath. All right, I want to save these leaves, so I'm just going to push them up toward the flower head and go ahead and cut these off. I'm leaving about five inches. And then we're going to pick our greenery and cut those off. I want this to be something that is not so bushy, so I'm going to trim it down. And I only had three of these pieces of fern, so I'm going to try to place them strategically so that they can be seen. It's really easy with this type of a grapevine wreath because you can just poke it down in there and it will pretty much stay where you put it. But I'm going to give you some options in case yours is not being agreeable. You can use a little hot glue and press it down like that until it's dry. Or you can make some little pins, which is what I do. And you're essentially making, taking the floral wire and making like, mm, like a little bobby pin. If you're familiar with a bobby pin, you're just gonna fold it just like that. And then you're gonna make sure that it's over the stem part of your flower or your greenery push it through your wreath and then on the back just twist it around and poke it back into the frame. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now I'm working in a somewhat of a moon shape on the side and I'm going to do things in opposite directions. So I'll have part of the arrangement going upward and then I'm going to do it backwards on the bottom and have it going sort of 
well, backwards or in the opposite direction. So pretty much their stems are facing one another, if that makes more sense. Okay, so I'm going to take the flower and bend it so that it has a little neck that's bending its head forward. And then I'm going to push the leaves up and then feed it down into the wreath. That's so simple and you don't even have to have any glue to make these flowers stay, which is great because these are very pretty flowers and I may want to use them again in another project. Same thing here, I'm going to push up my leaves, bend it, make a little neck for it, and then press it down. The reason I bend it is so that it will be facing straight upward instead of being at an angle. So I want it facing outward so that it, when it's hanging on the wall or the door, you can see it right into the center of the flower. And that's important with these flowers because it's got that very pretty greenish yellow in the center. And I want you to be able to see that, not just the pink side of the flower. So continuing along, press, pushing up the leaves and arranging those flower heads, just kind of bending it out. And you can see that the, we're forming a moon shape on the side. So my third piece is going to go right here on the side. I'm just going to bend it a little. And then continue adding greenery here and there where it makes sense and elongating that line of flowers by just continuing around the side a little bit. So what was our moon shape or our, our quarter moon shape over there is now a little bit elongated going toward the side. And I'm going to go up toward the top and this flower is smaller than the rest of them so I think that it is appropriate to be at the beginning. A lot of these flowers, if you have a good quality flower, you'll be able to kind of play around with those petals and make them stay where you want them instead of just using squished flowers. I know sometimes when we get them, they're mashed, but just fluff them out. Fluff them out and give them a chance. Um, they have a lot of potential. So rather than the flowers that he had on his neck, I decided that a little, little pretty bow would be appropriate. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this ribbon. I did thrift it, but it is originally from Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's out this year, but they do have a really pretty plaid that you can use. I just want something that's going to coordinate with the other ribbons that I've chosen and also with the flowers. So with these bows, you know, just keep playing with them. Don't give up on yourself and, and think that you've created a disaster. It's easy enough to fix, and then you can force it into place with a little bit of hot glue if it is not agreeing with you. So just a dot. It doesn't take a lot, and I'm just using my thumb on the inside so that it doesn't make the bow flat. I'm only gluing down the bottom or the back portion. And then we're going to glue down the tails. And they'll stay right where they need to be. Now we're going to start on a pretty bow. I'm going to take 18 inches and fold it over. And then I'm going to fold this several times. And in the end, I'm going to have three loops on one side, two loops on the other side. This is an easy bow. And don't worry about it. If you lose track when you're counting, that is totally fine. Whatever you come up with is going to be a pretty bow. I assure you. Just fold it over several times, don't worry about it. Now I'm folding it in half so that I can get my centers and I'm going to notch this bow just cutting through the wire and right into the fabric. This bow has been done lots of times by me. It's an easy bow to do. I did not create this bow. Some people say that it is the Olivia bow, but I've seen it done by people other than Olivia as well. So I don't know who originated it. Can't really give credit to that person. But I can give thanks because this is a very, very easy bow to use. Same process here, but I'm going to have two loops on each side. And then I'm going to cut this off. This ribbon that I thrifted does not have any wire in it. But it is a very, mm, I will say it's a thick, good quality fabric that this ribbon is made out of. So carefully putting a notch in the side here, turning the bow around and notching it here. Then I'm going to line the notches up 
Make sure that your loose ends are downward. And then you can use a pipe cleaner. You can use whatever you like, but a pipe cleaner works best for me on this type of bow. Slip it into the notches of the bigger bow. And then you're gonna flip it over. Get your zip tie arranged here. I'm just gonna kind of pleat the back of the bow just in the fold before I pull it tight and then start pulling out the tails and the bow. I like to start on the bottom of my bows when I began to fluff them out. It's just a little bit easier for me. Um, but you can do this whichever way you would like. And then I'm gonna pull the top apart. So you see I have five loops on the bottom and four on the top and the little tails that are sticking out there. Now feel free to cut the tails down very low if you wanna do that. You can dovetail the tails. You can cut them at a slant, just whichever way you like best. I wanted to do the dovetails on here. They're not really noticeable in the end with this bow, but in the event that they would show up, I like the idea of them being dovetailed. Just seems more festive. And this is sort of a Eastery and definitely a spring wreath and so easy and I've spent very little money I bought the sign I had everything else already so that's pretty good right a dollar 25 for the sign yeah so even though this doesn't have wire the quality of the fabric is allowing me to move that around and keep it in a nice shape and then we're gonna do the tails very easy we're gonna do 18 inches for the tail just cut off one of each of those ribbons and I'm gonna slant these. I'm gonna mix it up, give it a little variety. Just cut it on a slant, very easy. So you have some options, you know, you can you can do it a bunch of different ways. You don't have to copy me exactly. You can do whatever you are inspired to do. That's why I do these videos. It's to inspire you. It's to make you think, hmm, I could do that. But I like maybe I like purple or maybe I like blue or yellow better for Easter. Whatever you like, you can do it that way. Or maybe you were at Goodwill and you found a really beautiful gray and white checked ribbon. Go ahead and use that. Whatever you have, you can use it. It's going to be unique and it's going to bring you joy because it's going to be exactly what you love and that's what we need in our home. So we're going to use the wire here that we twisted this with Go right through that wreath and twist it around and then we have our tails and I wanted the tail to be kind of attached sort of toward the bottom toward the inside so that we have plenty of length represented and the bow doesn't cover the entire thing up. I'm going to feed a little through the back behind there and then a little on the side because I like the way that looks but you can do it any way you like. I just want to be sure that my bunny can be seen. So the ribbon that is around the bunny's neck, I'm gonna use to tie around the center of our bow. It matches so well. It's very, very coordinated. And then we're just gonna go ahead and use that ribbon to tie around, just thread it between the tails there and around the back of the wreath. So tie it tightly in a double knot and trim off what we don't need. If it was in the center, you could make a hanger with that. But we have ours off to the side, as I often do in my wreaths. You see how you can curl the ribbon just with your fingers? So if you wanted it to be in the front, you could do that. All right, I had some greenery left, so I'm just gonna cut it apart and go in here and add little pieces here and there until I get the fullness that I like. You know, I always recommend that you turn your pieces side to side and look at it from all angles to ensure that you get it looking exactly how you like it. And it's looking good so far. I like this. I like all the variety in the colors and the greenery. It looks very spring to me. So I live in the country, so we have lots of types of greens in our trees and in the grasses and the moss. So it's really nice to be able to put that in our arrangements, the variety of color. Let's try the second one. BurlapFabric.com has sent me some goodies and I got the green the white, 
and the large burlap ribbon all from them. I have some thrifted flowers. These are orange and white, but I'm going to change those out in a bit. This is a Dollar Tree sign, very pretty, and that is from this year. And then I have this egg wreath from Dollar Tree this year. I knew I had to have this. I knew I had to do something with it. Well, I got a little bit crazy and I broke it when I was taking the tag off. So it's easy to fix. I'm just using some masking tape, but you can use electric tape. You can use duct tape, whatever you have to just go over the place that it is broken. Twist it around and now it is good to go. It's strong, no problem. I'm gonna cut down here at, I think I have 12 inches. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do for this wreath. So this is burlap, it's not deco mesh, but we're gonna use the same technique. I'm gonna fold over about an inch here and then walk my fingers up to the end and the last inch I'm gonna fold over and then pull into the center. It makes a cruffle, just like when you're using deco mesh. This is the technique that we're gonna use to cover the base of our egg. So I have, I think, 10 or 11 of these zip, of these, <laughs> chenille ties. All you have to do is feed them through the outside ring, twist them around. I didn't think you wanted to see all of that. Then you're going to take one cruffle for each of these segments. So each of these little ties or chenille stems, I don't know why I cannot grasp the word pipe cleaner today. Maybe my medication. Who knows? I might need some more coffee. But this is what we're gonna do. You're just gonna continue all the way around. I use the outer rings for this because I want this to be larger. So I want it to be on the outside rings for that. If you alternate, it's gonna make it appear a little bit smaller and I want it to be as big as possible. I love this cream colored burlap. I thought this would be the perfect way to be a base on this beautiful egg wreath. I think you're gonna like this one. So we're gonna continue around just like this and don't worry about where they overlap. We're gonna adjust that in a minute and you'll be able to be sure that your entire frame is covered. And this does a really good job. If you wanted to save a little bit, you could probably do 10 inch um, little cruffles instead. 12 inch is what I went with and I'm very pleased with it. So here we go and this is how it looks. Go ahead, once you've got those together, and fix them so that they overlap each other in the right way to be able to cover your frame. And look at that coverage. Oh, this is gonna be really nice. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the bundles of ribbon that are gonna go in each one of those cruffles. So here you see me using some ribbon that I got on clearance at, I believe it was Michael's or maybe Joann's. We're gonna do 10 inch strips. So this is a wired ribbon, really pretty. And I know that gray is a, a very popular color. And then we're gonna do 10 inches of our burlap that is wired, that is white or cream. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the beautiful green. So now we have three pieces and we're gonna create stacks with these. This is easy to do. You, don't, you can choose any pattern that you like. You can put your plaid on the bottom, you can put your plaid in the middle, whatever you want to do. We're going to create an X and then a line straight down the middle. Pinch it up in the center and that is going to be our bundle. Now be sure you can use your little clips to hold it. I always do this. It just makes it an easier process. You can slant or dovetail your ends. I've found that dovetailing the ends really gives it more I guess kind of volume when you are fluffing in the end and I really like that aspect. So just go ahead and dovetail or cut them at a slant. And I wanted to show you on the first one how we do that and then pull those back apart. You can get an idea of how they're going to look. It's going to get a little crunched up when you put it down on your wreath and you'll see that. I'm going to show you how we do it. So I'm going to take that off. Remember your clip is on the front side. Push it down into the, the center and then tightly twist this in. You're gonna continue all the way around the wreath in the same technique. 
press it down into the center and twist it. It doesn't matter which way you lay this pattern and if your pattern is messed up it doesn't matter. When you fluff it you're not going to be able to tell. Y'all we had so much fun doing our little Q&A Saturday. I had a blast. I've been stuck in the bed with a back injury and I had so much fun. Thank you for everybody who showed up for that. Um, it just really it made my day. It was a lot of fun and we got to know each other we did questions and answers if you're not part of our youtube family consider subscribing checking out that community tab that's on my my front page and following along with us as we do our polls and daily questions and win prizes we have a lot of fun doing that um, we've had a lot of winners and they're very happy you know, they're reporting back saying they're happy with their packages and that makes me happy because I want everybody to have the ability to craft and to express themselves and have some joy in their life. And a little package is always fun. Okay, so you can see now I'm fluffing. I'm turning out all of those tails. I'm dividing, making sure all of my colors are represented and my patterns are represented. And it just makes a beautiful, beautiful base. Look at that. I am absolutely loving those colors together stunning I just absolutely love it I'm so glad I have ribbon left on each of those spools to do more projects so you may see these colors again now you can see it's still shaped like an egg and I love that we're gonna go ahead and take all of that extra stuff off the sign and we're gonna get it ready to attach to the wreath so use your hot glue put down your Chanel stems or your pipe cleaners or your floral wire, whatever you want to use, and a little glue and a little bit of paper. Once it is cooled, you can go ahead and center it where you want it on your wreath, and then feed those wires through the form into the back. When you do this, be sure that you're not pulling it too tight because you will crush down your wreath and it's going to not be as pretty as it would if it looked as though it was floating on the top of the wreath and that's kind of what you want it to look like it's just very gently resting on the top you don't want to squish anything down by doing it too aggressively so then take the little tails of the ribbons that are nearby and you can use those to cover up the holes that are in your sign there and you want to fluff them out so that you can see everything because the ones underneath you can't see as well I am pulling all the flowers off of their picks and this is kind of where I decide that the orange is not the best color and you'll see that I changed it to cream. I've cut down my wires because we won't be needing those anymore up there on the top. I don't recommend this type of a pipe cleaner. It's kind of a swirly pattern but it's really hard to use the wire cutters and cut through the fabric part. That's what's sticking. The wires work, the fabric part does not. So here are my cream colored flowers. My kids are upstairs making noise, y'all excuse that. I'm going to use my little creamy yellow and my white and just kind of alternate all the way around. And you see, I still have my egg shape and that's so pretty. I love that. This would be maybe more of a farmhouse look, but I still think that I'm going to make it look more cottagey and you'll see that shortly. So of course I'm going to use my greenery. I'm not going to throw that away. You know, that part of the rustic in me is going to remain that way. That's just who I am. And I'm going to start adding down my flowers. Now, right where our ties or our twists are in the center of those floral bundles is where we're going to place these down. You're not going to see it at all. And they just fit. These, these daisies just fit nicely in the cup of those bundles. I love that. And we're going to make a little bigger leaf to go on the bottom part and it's going to go underneath the sign so we don't want to have too much going on up top and then nothing on the bottom and I'm going to add some hot glue of course to hold these things in place I'm going to lift up on it a little bit so that my flower doesn't disappear under the sign I can still see the bunny so I'm happy about that and again Move things around where you like them once you get your flowers in there because they are going to cover up some of the arrangement. And thankfully we can move those wires and those uh, ribbons around because they are not glued down. They're just twisted down, right? 
and this is how it looks so far. So this would be actually perfect if you wanted farmhouse, but I'm gonna make it a little more cottagey, and I'm gonna add some beautiful little, I think these are ranunculus, and they are a peachy color, which I am loving this spring. Y'all know that, we've talked about it. I am loving this color this spring, and it looks beautiful with this pale, sweet yellow. Just It's just a buttery, soft yellow. And I'm just gonna add these here and there. There is no rhyme or reason. I'm definitely gonna take the greenery that came with the picks and I'm gonna use that as well. Doing this, in my opinion, adds more of a cottagey look. We're adding that look as if it was actually picked from a garden and brought into your home. And of course, when you do that, you are bringing in the greenery that goes along with it, right? Of course. So we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around where it looks like I want it to go. I didn't do a pattern with the placement of these little flowers and the greenery. I wanted it to look a little more wild and doing that without a pattern kind of does that. Just here and there. I'm going to continue along like that. So what colors are you doing for Easter this year? I know a lot of people in my polls said that they love purple, so I'm very happy to say that I will be doing some purple arrangements, some purple mm, creations. We'll just put it that way. I definitely have the supplies on hand and I am ready to go with that. We're going to continue to place those here and there. And I think that looks so pretty and sweet. Dollar Tree has several different versions of that sign. They have one, I think, that says blessed. Um, they may have one that says Easter. I'm not sure. Love, and I'm not sure what the other one is, but there's at least three of them. So if you don't find this one, go ahead and just grab another one. Just go with whatever colors are in that one. Now that is sweet. That is a cottage creation if I've ever seen one. So I found this little shovel and it had some other things on it which I've taken off already. And I'm going to give it a little makeover. It's approximately 16 or 17 inches long. You can use the little, little shovels at the Dollar Tree. If they have started putting out their summer stuff yet, you can definitely use something like that. But if you decide to use something thrifted, I'm going to show you how we can take it apart and fix it up. Mine happens to have two screws that are holding the shovel head onto the wooden handle. So I'm just going to undo them and remove them. There was no glue there. And I am going to cover up the holes that are in the handle. I'm just using some of this lightweight spackling that is from the Dollar Tree. Very easy to use, or should I say the dollar and a quarter tree. I'm just going to go over all those little holes. If you have any cracks or problems with your shovel, you can go ahead and Fill those in, let it dry, and then sand it off so that you don't, you know, have bumps and stuff. You'll have a good smooth surface to work with. All right, so I'm going to take a warmer green paint and cover up this bluish paint. I prefer warmer colors, so no matter what time of year, I'm always going to go toward the warmer tones. For me personally, that is. So I'm just going to take this chalk paint and go all over here. I only used one coat. Be sure that you get the areas that you don't necessarily see. So I'm going where the it was loose from the handle and the, the stick part of the shovel. It was loose, so I went ahead and took it apart, sanded it down, and I'm putting a little glue there. And then protect your eyes and nose because there's some rust on here, and you can sand this off. Go ahead and start sanding it. Now, the reason I did this is because the paint is raised and I wanted to make it kind of disappear. After I've wiped it down with the baby wipe and gotten all that stuff off of it, I'm going to cover it with this, I think this is elephant gray or a medium gray chalk paint. I didn't want to do the galvanized look and I think that this will be absolutely fine. My shovel was gray when I got it. So it's going to take two coats for me on this to get it to cover up completely. And I've done it kind of thickly and let it dry completely in between. I'm gonna use wood glue to reattach the handle to the pole part. And when you use wood glue, you can go ahead and use some type of a stick or whatever to make sure that you cover all your surfaces on the inside so it doesn't come off. 
that's what I'm doing. I've got to be sure to line this up correctly so that I have my my stem part of the handle right in the center because we have to put this back on right now I don't want to have a spotless shovel so we're going to use a little bit of this antiquing wax to go over all of the edges and the sides of this shovel head I'm just making it look like it would have been dirty it would have been rusty it would have been well loved so I'm making it look like that by using the antiquing wax. I mean it is antiquing wax so we're going to make it appear old. I don't want to have a bunch of brush strokes in there so I'm just taking a, um, an old sock that I have and I'm just wiping it back some. I'm going to make sure that I line the holes up correctly with the shovel head and push it straight into there. And then I'll be able to reattach my screws to hold it in place. So it's Mardi Gras holiday. Who else has their kids at home right now? Isn't it fun working with your kids stomping above you and yelling in the other room? Oh, it's real life, people. It's real life. All right. So I am going to, of course, rust the screws also. We're going to make those look rusty and old. And then also where it attaches to the, I guess I'm going to say handle. I think I've called that stick part a billion things. <laughs> what do you call it? All right gonna keep going around gonna make it look like it's been used like dirty hands have touched it and what do you think I think I achieved that look now we're gonna put some flowers on it all of these pieces are thrifted I'm gonna take all of these little pieces and bits and make a pretty little arrangement I kept you girls in mind when I made this arrangement because that is a lavender or a purplish colored bundle of flowers that we're gonna use for this arrangement your opinion does matter to me, so be sure to leave me a comment. What do you think about these DIYs? I'd love a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. I'm just going to go ahead and stack these together in any way that I think they would look great. In any way I think that they would look balanced, but of course maintaining a cottage style. So we don't have a pattern here. I'm just kind of poking things here and there, moving it around until I get it where I like it. And I'm just holding the base of it so that I can add my pieces together and it's gonna form somewhat of a swag. So you have some going downward, some going upward. And they meet in the middle. I'm making sure that I get all of my pieces of stem in there and I'm gonna use a zip tie to hold this together. This is the easiest way to do this rather than using floral wire. Everything would start to fall apart if you were trying to twist that end together. So now everything is tightly together. I have the opportunity to move some things around and get them where I think they look nice. I do this all the time and I do this constantly when I'm creating. Look how nicely that fits on the shovel. So I want the biggest part to face the head of the shovel and I'm gonna use another zip tie to fasten it to the handle. Easy, easy, right? You can use flower scraps for this. Absolutely use your scraps. So this is some thrifted ribbon that I have and I got this the same time that I got the plaid that we used in our first arrangement or our first wreath. Just some examples of other ribbons that you can use but I will be using this one from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut one eight inch piece, 18 inch piece and then I'm going to cut two of this little, it's actually like a it's a picket fence, like a garden scene with some flowers growing up beside it, almost like morning glories. It's really pretty. I'll be sad when it's all gone. Okay, so this is the bow that we're going to make. Very simple. You could see what I was doing there. If you missed it while I was running my mouth, no worries because I'm going to show you how to do it again on the next ribbon. Now this one's wired, but these are not. However, it's a very good quality ribbon and it is going to hold its shape without collapsing and I love that. You can see how we're making the ribbon now, how I'm adjusting it, and how long the tails are is going to definitely correlate with how big the loops are on the top. The idea is to make these loops a little bit smaller than what's on the burlap behind it and then on the next bow that we do, it's going to be even smaller. So this is like a stacked bow. 
very easy to use if you like somewhat of a bulky bow but you just don't have maybe the skills that you are comfortable with in making a bigger bow. So you'll see momentarily that you're gonna get a nice impact from this bow. It's super easy to make. This time, I'm just gonna use some jute. Now, I think I said in a previous video, I'm finally very satisfied with some jute that I received. And I actually got it from Goodwill, which is great because I got it cheap. However, I don't know where it came from because there was no label on it, but it is strong, very strong. And that's what you need when you're bow making if you're gonna use jute because it will snap and break and then your bow will fall apart. But I'm happy with this. Sorry that I can't share where it came from. Okay, so now we're going to fluff the bow. I have small hands and it makes it convenient when I um, are, am fluffing the bows because I can just put my finger down in the loops of even the smaller bows and pull those out and twist them around to get them in the shape that I like. Use your fingers and do the best you can. So you can see how big and pretty this bow looks. I mean, you know, it's a smaller, it's in a smaller scale, but how big and pretty it will be for the project that it's on. I don't know why my camera went yellow there, y'all. Excuse that, I'm not sure what happened. Everything looks kind of sickly. Okay, now back to normal. I'm going to put the bow on, flip it over, because when we hang this, we want the shovel head to be downward and the handle to be upward. That's why I put the bow on in this direction. Cut that off. You can use a little hot glue if you're worried about it moving, but I assure you the flowers are going to hold it in place. And this is how it is going to look. Do the same thing that I tell you on every project. Look at it from all sides. Fluff that bow, move the tails around, trim where you need to trim. And then if you see any gaps, by all means, feel free to go ahead and fill that in with a little something. Look at that, isn't it pretty? We still need a way to hang it, unless you're gonna hang it off of the handle, which I don't really recommend. So I'm gonna take some more of that jute and make a simple hanger. You can see how I'm doing it here. Make a loop, wrap the ends around, tie it, slip the knot down, and then you have a loop. All you have to do is trim off the tails to whatever length you like, and then we're going to add it to the handle part of this beautiful little arrangement. Protect your fingers, of course. And then when you turn it over, look at that. Isn't it cute? Okay, so we're going to start off with these supplies and have a variety of ribbon. This one came from the Dollar Tree from the Easter section and it is a wire ribbon. This is thrifted ribbon and it has no wire in it. And then this ribbon came from also the Dollar Tree and it just came over in the garden section. Little polka dots. This pick came from Dollar Tree. And then this one and the other floral one came from Goodwill. If you recognize that sign, you can let me know that tag. I'm not sure where that comes from. I'm going to use a sign that came from, I believe, Dollar Tree, but it's very old. And then this bag from Walmart that I got on clearance last year. You use any bag that you want. Dollar Tree has a lot of nice ones. And you can also get them at Walmart for fairly inexpensive. So I'm just going to cut off that hanger and decide which side of the bag I want. One side has white writing and the other side has silver. For my style and taste, I'm going to use the white. Just want to cut this out. Use whatever type of tool you want. Um, like one of those scrapbook cutters would probably be pretty easy and quick to use for this too. But I cannot find mine. I do not know what I did with it. So then I want to decide 
where I want this to be centered on that board. What part of this graphic from the bag do I want to be on my sign? So I'm just kind of moving it around the board to see about where I would need to put it. And once I get it there, I'm going to crease that paper so I'll know where to put it. I'm making sure it's even so I don't have any crooked areas and then I'm just going to cut it out. Do the same thing on both ends. And that is what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to generously apply my glue stick here all over. I love the purple vanishing stick. You can really see where you lay that down and I like that. I'm going to place it where I want it and there is a little bit of room up there on the top because I cut it a bit shorter than I anticipated. Y'all excuse the um, it being out of focus. I'm going to correct that in just a minute. I didn't realize it at the time. I wear glasses and I don't use them like I should. So yeah, looking through that tiny viewfinder, sometimes I, I don't see things the way I think everybody else sees them. So then I'm going to take this sanding block and go ahead and finish off the two sides. Makes a nice little finished edge. Okay, so this is what it looks like without any type of border. This is some thrifted, I don't know if that's like a rope type trim, but that's what it looks like to me. And I think it's going to look really good with the white truck and the white print on here. So I'm going to protect my fingers and get my glue gun and just start laying down a line a little bit at a time. Glue dries pretty quickly. So I'm making a border up there and you can see where I have that empty space that there's no um, bag piece on. And that's where I'm putting that little piece of rope. This is just going to trim it out nicely. You don't have to do this. Um, it's just an option to give it some dimension. When you make the corners, when you use rope-like trims, it's always kind of helpful if you have a clip or something that you can hold it in place, unless you want to hold it for a minute. Um, I, I try to work quickly because I never know when I'm going to be interrupted when the kids are home. So yeah, time saver. And I'm just going to do this all the way around until I get back to that corner. So that's me out of, see the little pink clip? Those come from the Crafters Square in Dollar Tree. I love those little clips. And they have little silicone ends so they don't stick to the glue. How's weather where you live? Are you getting some sunshiny days? There's a lot of rain. I know some people still get uh, snow right now, but we are not. We are having nice days and the highs are in the, the 70s and there's lots of sunshine and we are really loving it. My family, my dog, everybody just seems like the mood is a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to cut that and add a little glue on the end so that I can get that little fuzzy corner smoothed down. That gives it a more finished look. Can't see where it starts and ends. Gonna remove those clamps after I've given them some time to set up. And I'm gonna start working on an embellishment for this sign. You can leave yours simple if you don't wanna put, you know, bows or anything additional on yours. You certainly don't have to. So I'm starting off with this ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm making about a five inch loop with about a five or six inch loop tail. Since it's printed on one side, I'm going to pinch it in the middle and then twist it so that I place the printed part up on the top. I'm going to cut that section off. You can use a clamp to hold it in place or you can hold it in your hand while you begin to layer it. So I did the same thing with this ribbon and you can add it to your stack or 
I don't know what I was thinking right there. And then we're going to go for the third layer of our bow, and it's going to be exactly the same. The paint is thicker on one side, even though you can see it through the burlap. The paint is thicker on one side, and that's the side I want to show. So twisting that in the middle is going to give me the pretty side up for my bow. So now I just need to decide which way I want to layer this, what bow I want to go on top, and then what I want to go on the bottom. Now, since this top bow does not have the structure from wire, I decided to put it on top. And I'll show you how I make it look a little less floppy here in a minute. I'm going to use a zip tie. You can get a big bag of these anywhere. And they're very convenient to have around the house for other projects as well, not just for crafting. And then of course you want to fluff that bow out, get an idea of how it looks, where you want all of your little um, loops and tails to be, and then trim off your excess. Of course, you could use floor wire or pipe cleaner if that's what you have available. I don't edit out all of the bow fluffing and prettiness because I feel like it's helpful to see because sometimes when you make a bow, it doesn't immediately look good. You know, it takes a little bit of fluffing. It takes a little bit of attention and time to get it looking like the end result that you want. So I want to show you how my bows start so you can see how they look in the end and that you shouldn't give up and just throw it away and toss it out and start all over again because they, you can definitely make something better of it. You can move these, these pieces all around. See there, that's much better. Then I wanted to put it in the corner, but putting it in the corner was going to overlap my truck and I did not want to obscure my little Easter truck. So I decided, okay, well, I can raise it up a little bit if I use a popsicle stick and just attach it there. And so now you can see more of my sign, but I still have my embellishment on the top. So of course, we're going to be using hot glue for that. and then a little piece of this ribbon to go over the top. That's just gonna give it a little extra support. Bow doesn't weigh very much, so I don't need a whole lot of reinforcement or a super ton of glue over there. Just a little bit will work. All right, so when you have the tails, make sure they're all facing up, the pretty side is up, and make a little spot for the bow to attach to the popsicle stick. You can do this with any sign or you can do this with a wreath as well. You can put a popsicle stick in there to move your bow to the outside or the inside. Whatever makes it easier. It gives you a little more space so that the main attention can be on the sign. And use a clamp there like I'm going to. And this is, I think these came from the laundry section in Dollar Tree, if I'm remembering correctly. And they make really good clamps for things that are a little bit thicker. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of floral in there. And I'm choosing what pieces from these picks that I think would look the best. These picks are gorgeous. And there's several different kind that are similar to this at Dollar Tree. And they have several different little pieces. They're really pretty. Gives you a lot of variety. So I had to decide, did I want to use yellow, white, green, or peach for this project? And I think that the, pre the peach is um, gonna be the winner here. There is a peach, a peach and rosy colored rose in the back of that truck or a flower. And I think that that one's gonna be the one. So instead of curling my tail straight under, I kind of bowed them in the middle and curl the ends out like a wave. That's how I want those to be. And I'm trying to get the bow exactly how I want it so I can put the flower down. You can put some uh, curve in these ribbons just like that. You just use a metal piece or the edge of your scissors carefully and just pull down while holding that ribbon and it'll put a curl. It has to be a stiff ribbon. This is not going to work like on a satin. Um, this is like a polyester tight ribbon. So it has some stiffness in it already and that's what you'll need to do for that. 
but it works and there's no wiring so I'm just showing you there how it coordinates that flower matches um, a square in the ribbon and it matches some of the flowers in the back of the truck and I'm just gonna plop it down right in the center of the polka dot bow and I think that is precious just like it is there I go again arranging that bow okay so I've taken the little yellow pieces and I'm gonna add those I'm just going right across from each other give it a little balance that way and then there are some fern pieces here sorry I'm out of uh, the camera angle here there we go that's a little bit better just gonna tuck those in between the, the bow and the flower and then same thing I'm gonna go across from it and add it here and then to put a little extra something on the other side because I don't want just all the weight to be in that top corner I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of greenery and a little surprise down here in the corner because these eggs won't lay flat they are foam and they can be cut so I just took my scissors and I am cutting off like a third of that egg I'm gonna pick a little bit of that foam out of there and reshape it and that way once I get my see there uh-huh the Easter Bunny dropped us the egg off early I'm gonna add that there and then the yellow piece this is the same greenery that we have in the top under the bow and I'm gonna add some blue here and put it down right on top of that now after Easter is over you could always take the egg off or you could leave the egg on and just use it again next year because the bag does say Easter so you might not want to leave it up all spring now we need a hanger for this so I'm just using a scrap piece of pipe cleaner that I had and I'm gonna have a long straight piece this way you can slide it back on back and forth on your command hook or your nail in order that it will stay balanced because if you put it right in the middle as a single little piece then it may pull to one side and you don't want that so this way you can move it up and down until you get it balanced exactly where you want it on your We're going to need some pipe cleaners, a sign of your choice from Dollar Tree. I love this one, very rustic. A wire wreath form, and this is the bigger form. And I've got just a bunch of carrots that I got at the thrift store, but you can use the carrots that you buy at Dollar Tree. It's totally fine, whatever you have. I have some burlap ribbon, and then I have another variety of burlap and linen ribbons some mesh ribbon and then just to give you an idea of other types of patterns that you could use with your wreath we're going to start off by laying out the frame here and I'm showing you with this green we're going to add you'll see me doing this on the crossbars here we're going to do a green one on the inside loop and a green one on the outside loop of each one of these now I started off with a different pattern when I used the orange on another wreath so just avoid that just don't pay attention to that one when you see it we're going to skip back over to it you just do your wreath just like this because this is the pattern we end up using so over the crossbar on the bottom ring and in the top ring right in those centers just give it a few twists and use a full length pipe cleaner here then you want to go all the way around back to the top you can kind of do the math on that and see how many you'll need all right so we're going to grab that roll kind of pleat it pinch it make sure that the edges are kind of on the outside it's not wired so it's just uh, kind of got a seam on it there makes it nice and neat 
And like I said, we're going to just pretend like this is on the outside. Okay, we're pretending like this is on the outside. And then we're going to go down 10 inches, make a little poof. And then we will use the tie and put that down. So what you're going to be doing is, since you'll have two on each rung, remember how we did that, you're going to go from inside, outside, inside, outside. So if we started off on the inside, the next would be the outside. The next poof would go to the inside. The next poof would go to the outside. You see what I'm saying here? That's how we're going to be doing this all the way around. So we were on the outside. Now we're back on the inside. We're going to make a 10 inch poof and we're going to go back to the outside. And when we put the next layer on, we'll do just the opposite. So this ribbon will be kind of crisscrossed over on itself. If you don't have this, it's fine to use whatever type of um, wide ribbon that you have. Maybe you could use that. Never try to just use a big wide ribbon that didn't have a lot of body like the burlap does. Um, but you could try it, certainly, and you can use any type of uh, deco mesh if you wanted to use deco mesh instead. I'm not the biggest fan of deco mesh. I don't mind using it occasionally, but I prefer the burlap just because I prefer, you know, a rustic or a country type cottagey look. So now we went all the way back to where we started and we're going to go to the inside. Just going to go back and forth now. So we're on the inside. We're going to give that a few tight twists and then we'll measure 10 inches and we'll go to the outside. And this is the process that you want to use all the way around till you get back to the beginning. Y'all just supposed to storm today. Today is actually the 16th and we're supposed to have some terrible weather in about 15 minutes. So hopefully I can get this video finished for you guys and run down to get some good and fast high speed internet at the library and then be back home in the safety of my house where I have a storm basement should I need it. Okay, so we went all the way back around and trimmed it off. Now we're going to make some ribbon stacks because you know this is just my preferred method for these wreaths. And since I've done them several times, I figured this would be an easy wreath for you to follow. You've seen me do these before. I'm going to use a striped on the bottom, a solid one, and then that little mesh. And I actually use the white mesh rather than the green. I just like the combination of this a little bit better. I'm trying to keep it in you know, keep it as neutral as possible, but still giving it that pop of spring and Easter color. So, now for this wreath, when we put down these ribbon stacks, you're going to put it right in the center and take the two ends on the outside and the two ends on the inside. Just bring all those pipe cleaners to the middle and you're going to cross two over two. Very easy and you'll see me do it again. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Then I'm going to take the two from the left and the two from the right and twist them together. I'm just going to pull them down tight so they kind of squish down in there. And there you go. Easy enough, right? This is easy. Y'all can do this. Y'all can definitely do this. And wouldn't this be cute for if you did it for like St. Patrick's Day and you did, instead of using orange, you just used uh, maybe some gold and some green and some white. Heck, I think the in the Irish flag, green, white, and orange. So actually, maybe this wreath base could be used if you wanted to put your St. Patrick's Day goodies on it. Let me know in the comments if you know if that is the colors in that um, the Irish flag, because I think it is. It may be yellow and green. It may be yellow and green, I'm not sure. But I'm just going to speed this up and show you. Now, I cut, think I cut these at 10 inches, and then I dovetailed all of them. And the only ribbon that has wire in it on these stacks is that green ribbon. And I got that 90% off after fall at Hobby Lobby. So, yeah, I was very happy to find that ribbon. Okay, I'm going to continue all the way around. I hope y'all are staying safe. Uh, and I hope that you up north, that you guys are not freezing in the cold weather. I've, I've heard so much about snow and and people being cold and I know that some places are getting cold weather they're not even used to having. So that's just 
oh, I just, I don't, I can't imagine. I'm glad I have a fireplace, but I don't have to use it very many days where we live. You know, down in South Alabama, you don't really need fireplace necessarily, but I think they're beautiful and I love to hear the sounds and watch the fire. I'm an Aries, so I love the fire. All right, so now when you get all the way back around, go ahead and fluff that all out. You can pull your burlap underneath and then fluff your little ribbons and you can kind of manipulate them and get them around there. See how pretty that cream and burlap colored linen ribbon is underneath? I love that. I've done it on a, used it on a few projects and it really just is so neutral it goes with anything. Very farmhouse pop to it. So this is what the base is going to look like. And we're going to take a bunch of carrots. I'm going to tie those together. I'm just taking three and I've kind of staggered them in the layers so that they look, you know, they look nice and they're, they're going to have the lowest profile as possible instead of all sticking up when I glue them down. So the one underneath is a little bit lower down and the two on top um, are kind of layered on top a little bit. We'll tie this little bunch of carrots like we've been to the farmer's market. Go back in there and cut off these pipe cleaners. Anything you have left, cut it off. Don't cut all the way into where you twisted it or it will fall apart. So just leave a little nub there and just push it down. And if you would like to, you can take those pipe cleaners and push them down into the raised base, base <laughs> if you would like to. Whichever way is easiest for you is fine. And some people don't have clippers, and so that's fine too. By the way, a lot of people ask about these wire cutters. I don't have the exact same ones in my Amazon store, but I have something similar if you want to check them out. So we took the hanger and the tags off the sign. We got it flipped over. And now we're going to put in the pipe cleaner so that they will kind of reach through the wreath so that we can secure it down. So I'm going to use some glue here and then a little scrap paper over the top. Give that a chance to cool down and dry. I'm just going to use a clamp to hold it for me so I don't have to sit there with my hand on it. Anything we can do to save time is wonderful. Clamps help me so much. Okay, now we got the other one. Clamp it. Once it's all cooled off, pop your clamps off. Bend your wires like this. And then when you flip them over, you can just kind of feed those little pipe cleaners right through the wreath base and then right onto the wire because you don't want to attach it where it's just stuck down to a piece of ribbon. You really want it on that wire frame so that it doesn't go anywhere. It won't shift and won't go anywhere. And since we didn't hot glue this sign down, you can move the sign off, use it for something else, and you can just use the wreath base. Why am I having a trouble saying that today? wreath base. Okay, you can use that by itself without the sign. And I love that idea. You can just swap things around. I love it. And there's my beautiful little cotton patch little sign in the middle of there and I think it looks perfect. So now we got to add our carrots up there, right? And I love that there are carrots in the picture and now we're putting carrots on the outside of this wreath and I think it looks darling and cottagey. I just love this. I hope y'all will try to do something like this. I know these carrots are very nice carrots. I got them at, you know, at the thrift store. Unfortunately, I'm not sure where you can get the exact same thing, but use what you got. And we don't have to do a big bow or anything. This is perfect just as it is, but by all means, put a bow on there if that's what you like. My videos can be seen on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time. Are you just like a little extra something here and there in your house to give the idea of a holiday? I'll show you what you can do. This was my inspiration, this beautiful ribbon that I got at the thrift store. I got, I think, three different rolls with a different design, but they're all kind of a garden design that I'll be using. Love. We'll start with this one. I got some tags and a acrylic pen and then a little piece of leftover wire there or pipe cleaner. So these are on a wire, the greenery, so I'm just going to kind of um, pull them apart and kind of fluff them a little bit, make them look good or to what I think looks nice. You can do yours however you want and if you don't have greenery, you can just add some to your carrot tops if you wanted to. 
you got to have something on those carrots to hold them together, right? So wrapping something around the greenery up top really gives me the ability to do this. You can always take your little carrots if you don't have greenery and just glue the carrots together and have a little stack of your own. So you know when you go to the farmer's markets, you see maybe some bags of onions, maybe bags of potatoes, lots of things are singular and you just kind of pick what you want and put it in a bag. In my mind, the carrots would be in bunches because whoever buys just one carrot, right? So they would be in bunches. And I thought, you know what? We're gonna make a bunch. This is gonna work. I'm cutting off a length of this beautiful ribbon, no wire, and it's sort of a papery fabric-y. It's the stuff that they were made out of a good while back. I don't know how to explain it, but it's sturdy. It'll stay where you put it. If you make the bow small enough, it won't get floppy at all. And I've worked with this kind of ribbon before, and I like it. I don't mind at all. No wire to have to cut through, and it still holds the shape of the bow, and I love that. Rather than using jute, I just decided to use some of this thin black ribbon that I had and use it to tie in the middle of the bow. Kind of makes it disappear and it blends in nicely. I wish that Dollar Tree had something like this that you guys could get. And I'm trying to think, maybe something in a black and white check or gingham. I think there's orange and white gingham rolls there too, but it's a thinner, thinner ribbon. I think that would be cute too. So I'm just gonna take that little tag there and I'm gonna write 25 cents. When I started off, I wrote it small and I did not like the fact that it was so tiny. So I'm just gonna flip it over. Thank goodness for two sides, right? And make it bigger. Now that's gonna suit what we got. I'm just making a hole here with a little awl that I have, but you do not have to use that. If you've got a hole punch, just go ahead and use that. But some people don't have those, so this works for me. And push that through that hole so that we can tie it down to the ribbon because we didn't trim it off the back, so we have the ability to tie it on there. And then using that same black thin ribbon, we're gonna flip it over and tie it right over where we put our pipe cleaner and then we can trim that off I hope it doesn't bother y'all that I say our and we and us because I like to feel like I'm talking to you you know like we're having a conversation I'm not just recording this like I'm I'm talking to you I'm instructing you I'm helping you I'm encouraging you so when I say we I mean us right all my crafty friends now look at that isn't that simple that was so quick and easy to do, but that'll look so cute on a tear tray or just sitting somewhere in your house. We're going to take some greenery, whatever type you like, some thrifted and some's from Dollar Tree. Do you use what you got? I like the cream and the orange, and I have two different sets of orange so I can decide which one I like best. This came from the thrift store, but you can get these type of tag signs from Dollar Tree. This one's about 15 inches. And then I have some fabric that I thrifted and got the name on there for y'all so you can check it out if you can find some for yourself. And then a little piece of foam, which I'm going to trim down because I want this to have a rounder appearance. So since it's as wide as that, I'm going to need to trim it down so I have room on both sides. This is my knife from Dollar Tree for pool noodles. Isn't it great? I love that thing. Okay. So now I'm just trying to get an idea of how much I want to have on here and how far I want to pull it up. And I'm just going to tear it. It'll make a nice straight line if you tear it that way. And then I had to get this one going a little bit, so I just nicked it slightly through a few threads and then pull it off. And we'll have nice straight square edges. Next is going to be the hot glue, and this is how we're going to hold this foam to the board while we fool around with that fabric to get it where we want it. I don't want anything slipping around. So I want this little rough edge to be on top and I want it to be slightly over so you can see down in there. Slightly over so that we don't see that foam. I'm just trying to kind of measure it out and then fold it over. You can get some clamps to use for this if you need to. I'm going to add some hot glue down and then fold the edge over. 
one at a time. I don't want to stretch it too hard, but just stretch it a little bit. And you see I'm holding it with my wrist on the other side. All right, now for the bottom, I'm going to see how much we need to fold up. And it looks like I have a little too much, so I'll trim a little excess off where that writing and everything was, about an inch off. And then I'm going to fold this sort of like you would if you were wrapping a gift. I'm going to add some hot glue here to help hold it in place while I work on the other side. This is going to give such a clean, nice edge. And then once it's all folded up and glued down, you can cover it up with another piece of fabric or you can use a piece of um, scrap paper or some of that crafting paper on the back if you would like to do that. But now this held it down good for me. So now I can pull that edge up nice and straight and then add my hot glue and press it down. And this will be the bottom of this wall pocket. Now I've made these before. This is nothing that you haven't seen me do before. But I love the idea of that carrot fabric on that orange board. And then the orange and the white and the green together. I think this with the wreath and the little bundle of carrots just makes such a cute little trio to use in your house. Not everybody goes all out and decks out their entire house for a holiday. But if you just want a little bit here and there, these three pieces can be used maybe in your kitchen and front room, you know. And that would be it. That's all you would have to do. Not everybody has a big house either, right? Some of us have apartments. Some of us live with other people. And we don't really have the space to monopolize with all of the stuff that we make. And this way, they're fairly small. And you can work with those. I think so. So I put the fern pieces in the back. Those came from the thrift store, but you can certainly get beautiful greenery pieces from Dollar Tree right now. So go ahead and grab whatever you like. If you like ferns or whatever, go ahead and use that. You could even have some ivy trailing over the edge if you wanted to. And I'm just going to start adding these in. I'm not going to make this an even bouquet. I'm not going to have this symmetrical all over. This is going to be a little here, a little there. Some will be higher than others. Here's the one that's on a stem that has two. I'm going to place that down in there. Get it in the right spot so that its face isn't all squished. And that's why we fluff too. Once you get your pieces where you want them, fluff them out. See how you like it. And then you can move stuff around if you need to. Add a little bit more here and there. And I chose the orange that's a little the orange that's a little bit softer of a color. It's more of a peachy orange or a lighter color orange. And the other one had some green and orange in it, but it's pretty vibrant. And I I'm gonna save that one for another project, I think. But you see how cute and how easy is this? So easy. Let's add one more right up here on the side. Now, if you like this, you can leave it exactly like this, but I'm going to give you two options on how to sort of top it off. Two options. All right, so I've torn a strip of that same fabric. If you want to use this fabric as a hanger, you can go through the hole in your sign, whatever you get that you're using. Most of them do have a, high, a little hole in the top or a shape cut out, and you can use it in there. It doesn't matter. This would probably be pretty on the new, I think it's, uh, it's a little end cap that I've seen in my store that's got farmhouse stuff on it. And it's got some rustic looking white um, ship-like paneling, sort of, and that would be really cute too for the background. If you don't want to use that hanger like that, you can just make a bow to go on the top. That's another option, and that's the one that I chose. So I'm just going to make this really simple bow like we did with the other one really easy. Now this is cotton fabric so it's floppy. It's not going to hold a big big old bow so I'm just going to put a little little something in there. And the fact that it's cotton and it's got a rough edge and it's just kind of floppy just gives me some shabby chic feels and I like that. I think that it's cute with those beautiful little flowers on there. I don't know it's just a feeling. You know sometimes you're doing a project and you put something down and you're like something doesn't feel right about this. It's just not quite how I want it. So then you take it off and you try something else and you're like, yep, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was going for. I think we all do that. You just don't see my entire process because 
it would take forever and you wouldn't get a 30 minute video you would be watching me for hours probably nobody wants to hear me ramble on for hours so you can add your bow wherever you like I'm gonna put my above the little hole there because that way the hole itself can be the hanger and I'll just hot glue this in the center and then the ends could be torn or you could shag them up by pulling some threads out you could cut them at a slant you could do a dovetail but I'm just gonna leave them plain just like that a little rough on the edges I'm gonna leave it and it looks good enough for me and I think that is I think it's cute it's not even even you see how the edges are not even I still like it but there's one more thing we can do here so I've got this little carrot I'm gonna add carrot right to the top now that just brought it all together and the carrot came from the thrift store by the way our carrot needs some greenery I tried using some of the waxed greenery that came off the carrots that the bigger carrots that I used and it just was not sticking well with the hot glue I couldn't get it to work for me so I'm just going to cut down another leaf so you can do this if you're gonna make carrot tops for your little Dollar Tree carrots and I'm just gonna kind of cut notches in it so that it looks like the loose top of a carrot the little fluffy top of a carrot and it's dark green and it matches what's already in the piece and I'm gonna glue it down right to the stem that was poking out of that carrot and that completes that little bow. I think that's cute. I hope you find pride and happiness in the projects that you do too. Be happy about it. Be proud of it. Show it off. It's your hard work and creativity brought to light. If you've enjoyed parts of this video, I would love a thumbs up and I hope that you have learned something while you have been here for sure. Look at these three together. I think that is adorable. I want you to do these projects. If you do any of these, please feel free to email me. You can find my email, my Amazon store, my PO box. Everything's in the description box for you. You can do it. I know you can do it. I've seen pictures where people have made projects based on inspiration that they found on this channel. And I know that you can do it too. Not everything you see is going to inspire you from my channel, but if you do see something you like, I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around because this channel is all about budget-friendly and unique DIYs for your home. 